calling our committee hearing to order. This is a continuation of our last hearing uh, held early in September on the Senate Bill 1591. Did I get it right? That is the Act Protecting Consumers and Merchants Engaged in Internet Transactions creating for this purpose the e-commerce bureau and appropriate appropriating funds therefore so the chair thanks uh, senators uh, marcos and gachalian for joining me uh, in this hearing this afternoon and for the record the committee secretary will now acknowledge our resource persons who are uh, present Committee Secretary, please. You're on mute, ma'am. You're on mute. Please. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the Senate. Uh, allow me to acknowledge uh, those resource persons who have confirmed and already are on board. Uh, from the Department of Trade and Industry, we have Deputy Director General Nelson Laluces and Attorney Marco Maat. From the Department of Information and Communications Technology, we have Director Leo Urbis Tondo Jr. and Attorney Christopher Leiden. From the National Privacy Commission, we have Attorney Vida Zora Bocar and Attorney Frances Ira C. From the Securities and Exchange Commission, we have Attorney Katrina Jean Miranda. From the Philippine Competition Commission, we have Attorney Faye Condes de Zagon. From the Securities and Exchange Commission, we also have Attorney Jan Paul Fernandez and General Counsel Romualdo Padilla and Director for Corporate Governance, Rachel Esther Guntang Remalante and Oliver Leonardo. From the Bureau of Internal Revenue, we have Assistant Commissioner Mr. Larry Barcelo. From the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, we have Mr. Raymond Estioco. From the, from the private sector, we have from the Lazada Attorney General Alfredo Castro. Subcommittee J is hereby resumed. This juncture from with Jackie, we have Attorney Christopher Chong and Attorney Jem Han Segovia. From, from Zalora, we have Mrs. Anna Grace Ponce Stroller. From Google, we have Attorney Ives Gonzalez. From Anclas, we have Mr. George Rebecca. From the U.S. ASEAN Business Council, we have Ambassador Michael Mikalak and Ms. Norica Pineda. From the Philippine Retailers Association, we have Attorney Paul Santos. From the Citizen Watch Philippines, we have Mr. Orlando Gonzalez. And from the UP Law Center, we have Attorney Oliver Reyes. And from the ICT 4D and Telecom ICT policy, we have Mr. Angelo Gutierrez. That's all, sir, for the moment. Have we, uh, have we acknowledged Mr. Oxales? Yes, sir. Ah, okay, na. Okay, see. okay, so welcome to all. Uh, I will try my best to use the English language because we have a special guest for today's uh, hearing. I invited the U.S. ASEAN Business Council, uh, and they're, they're represented now by Mr. Michael Michalak, uh, who is uh, busy in Singapore, because they offered to be a resource person to the senators who attended the online conference. So uh, I accepted their, their offer. And uh, uh, I, I will allow first the senators if they have something to say or some statements or questions. but. But after the senators, let us hear from the from Mr. Michalak because he I think he can only stay up to two p.m. So let us let, let us let our uh, invited guest participate also in our proceedings. 
And then after the U.S. ASEAN Business Council, I think the BSP uh, uh, requested to go next. And then uh, all the others, especially those who have not yet submitted their position papers and those we failed to hear from during the last hearing. And uh, the chair acknowledges now uh, Senator Cayetano uh, Pia is also here with us. So from among the senators, uh, uh, I Senator Aimee wants to go ahead. Yes, please go ahead, Senator Aimee. Just a quick manifestation, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, following the discussion during the first hearing, um, I uh, have a series of uh, amendments that I would like to propose to uh, uh, present as well to uh, my co-author, uh, Senator Gachalian. Uh, firstly, I, uh, I'm a bit concerned about the joint and solidarity liability in section 18 and 19. So I would uh, recommend that we delineate joint uh, liability versus uh, and solidarity liability versus the subsidiary liability. Um, there are also concerns about notice and takedown for uh, regulatory compliance of regulated items in medicine, food and cosmetics. Uh, thirdly, I think we need a the definition of C2C of consumer to consumer and perhaps perhaps this is up for discussion. Uh, fourthly, I would like to recommend a threshold of transactional value at 3 million pesos per year or 300,000 per month. And uh, finally, of course, the uh, due notice and hearing provision that seems to be absent in some of our clauses. That's all, uh, Mr. Chair, and I uh, will submit these provisions as they come. Thank you very much. We we, we will entertain them during the technical working group uh, yes. meetings, Ms. Senator Mark. You, what is the idea of threshold to be covered by the law? There must be a, the, ent the entity, the business entity must have a threshold uh, revenue flow. Yes, there was a concern that a uh, very, very tiny uh, 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 stay-at-home moms who were uh, bartering on the side or selling uh, baked goods on the side would uh, suddenly be inflicted with all kinds of registration and tax uh, requirements. So um, we wanted to put a minimum SANA, which is recognized by the DTI at 3 million per year or 300 per uh, month. The important thing, Rinpo, is the joint and solidarity liability. I think it's really unduly onerous. We do not impose this on the Change, on the Sari Sari store. Why are we inflicting it on online? So perhaps these are things to be considered, as you said correctly, in the TWG, Napo. But uh, if there's uh, room for discussion, uh, I'd be grateful. Thank you. We don't impose the joint and solidarity in the Change, Sari Sari, and even in the malls. Amaba? Yes, Tama, even in the. Okay, so from the senators, uh, who else? Okay, okay. Mr. Chair, I, first I want to thank you for uh, for uh, conducting the second hearing, but I don't have any any uh, opening statement. We can proceed with the hearing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Pia, also wrote. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I also am uh, looking forward to this hearing. Uh, just to say that I also have very specific amendments on the bill, including that joint and solidarity liability. Uh, our end goal really is to encourage um, internet transactions and internet business. So what we really want to do is have safeguards in place, yes, but not to the point where we push them out of this space and uh, they would be resorting to other means of selling. Um, that are either back to uh, the old, the, the dark ages, whatever that is, um, or or using other platforms online that have less security measures. Naman. But again, we can discuss this further in the TWG. I'm very interested in giving more time to our international speaker and to listen to the others. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I will now give time to our invited resource person and, and, and thank him very much uh, from... Um, Mr. Michalak of the USC and Business Council. Sir, uh, if you have uh, some observations on the particular bill or subject matter that we are uh, talking about, the floor is yours. Sir, thank you very much, Michael. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And let me, let me say that it's a pleasure once again to see yourself and, and of course to see Senator uh, Cayetano and Senator Gazzia. Italian, 
uh, and to see uh, Senator uh, Marcos, whom we met a couple of years ago during one of our other business missions here to, uh, uh, to the Philippines. Uh, we very much appreciate the opportunity to uh, present some of our views here. And actually, I think that uh, uh, these views are not only the views of the uh, U.S. ASEAN Business Council and uh, a majority of our uh, 167 uh, members, uh, but I believe that they are totally in line with some of the comments that we just heard from both Senators Marcos uh, and, and uh, Senator Caetano. So, we, we do appreciate very much the Congress's interest in promoting e-commerce and protecting consumers. In pursuit of this goal, however, we wonder if the current Senate bill may overreach somewhat in its scope. For instance, seeking to require all companies selling goods and service into the Philippines to have a physical presence because of the requirement to register with the SEC would be unprecedented within ASEAN a significant divergence from international best practice and very disruptive to foreign service providers as well as consumers and businesses uh, in the Philippines. Uh, we're also concerned by the requirement for all e-commerce service providers to register with the e-commerce bureau uh, since we don't believe that it's practical or necessary for all foreign merchants to register locally. Uh, the USABC and our members recommend that this provision uh, be dropped. And I believe that uh, Senator uh, Marcos was uh, saying much of the same thing along with Senator Cayetano. Uh, prominent services are easily reached by regulatory authorities and in many cases are already present in the Philippines. Furthermore, best uh, regional best practices, as well as the Philippines' own draft VAT legislation, demonstrate that local entity registration is not needed in a digital era regulation. It'll be counterproductive and, and rates of compliance may be low. Uh, you actually uh, you actually stole my example, Senator Marcos. <laughs> to present. And I was thinking of somebody out in Podunk, Idaho, who makes handbags or something and had one sale to a person in the Philippines and would have to be registered with the SEC but I think you're, you're trying to take care of that by raising the limit on this, but uh, I think the whole provision could be dropped and, and would make the entire bill even more, uh, even more productive and uh, even, even more uh, useful. We also would like to raise the idea of the scope uh, of the bill, including uh, digital goods and services, uh, incredibly broad. Uh, almost as broad as the web itself. At a minimum, limiting the scope of the draft to physical goods and e-commerce providers thereof, which is already an incredibly large and diverse universe, is recommended. We'd also like to recommend that the bill focus on business-to-consumer transactions, excluding business-to-business. -business. This would more closely align with the bill's goal of trying to build trust uh, between the online merchants and consumers and assure that, and ensure that there would be no interruption uh, commerce that takes place on a business to business relationship. And business to businesses have been doing this for so many years now that they have built up a good, uh, a good relationship of trust between them. Um, the Senate bill also introduces the concept that a company one is liable for the unlawful acts of third parties with which it conducts business and two, must perform extensive oversight and regulatory compliance functions to ensure such third parties are and remain legally compliant. Uh, we believe, again, that this places unreasonable liabilities and duly, unduly burdensome administrative requirements on parties engaged uh, in commerce in the, uh, in, engaged in e-commerce in the Philippines. So we appreciate the, uh, the Senate's time to hear our concern and would be happy to discuss this further or uh, confer with our members, one of whom is, is actually here as well, Google, uh, if you have any, uh, any follow-up questions. So thank you very much, Senators, for your time. Uh, and I would be available to, uh, to discuss this further. Um, uh, or if it gets too technical, I'm glad to see that we do have one of our members here as well. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir, for your uh, participation.
on behalf of your organization, the USSC and Business Council. Uh, please stay for as long as you can stay. Uh, sure. You're, you're, you're welcome. So if the senators have questions for Mr. Michalak, yes, uh, Senate, uh, ladies first, Mona, Senator Marcos, then Senator Gachalia. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I was concerned about the B2B coverage and uh, as a result in Section 5, Mr. Chair, um, I'm uh, recommending that to in fact put a uh, C2C definition just to make things clear. Um, perhaps uh, Mr. Mishala can help us with the definition of uh, C2C and uh, for tidier legislation, let's put all the definitions in Section 5. Book. Yes, Mr. Mishalak, if you can give the com uh, the committee the definition for C2C that uh, you think is workable. Uh, Senator Marcos, you know, uh, I'm afraid that my Tagalog is, is not very good, but my <laughs> lawyer is even worse. So I would I would rather defer to some of the, the better legal minds uh, within uh, within the council or within the, the Senate to come up Thank with a, with a good workable. Sorry, Mr. Mishalak, you can just uh, submit it to uh, Chairman Coco so he can uh, handle all the definitions because there are some distinctions. Thank you. Okay, <coughs> will do. Thank you. What is important is that the our resource person pointed it out that uh, the, their opinion is that the scope is incredibly broad. If we could limit it to B to C and not B to B, and then uh, I think Senator Marcos says that. C2C. C2C also, so. Yeah, the C2C, yes, Paul. Yeah, so it's in. I hope you can understand all the alphabets. We're going to use <laughs> A to Z later on. <laughs> <laughs> not quite. We're not there yet, Paul. But uh, I, I uh, posited in Section 5, A, C to C. That's the most significant. Okay, we'll certainly help out, yes. Yes, yes, okay. Uh, anyway, we can, we can, I think we can, all, we can also ask some uh, uh, knowledgeable people to help us, no? Okay, Absolutely. so, Senator Sherwin, for a reaction? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I, being the principal author of this bill, I'm compelled to rationalize the provision on solidarity li liability, Mr. Chair. And just put on record, the rationale there is to uh, make the platform uh, responsible for the goods being sold outside of the country. And a lot of these goods are located uh, beyond reach of our, our ordinary consumers. And uh, our ordinary consumers have no recourse if they have bought uh, toxic items, illegal items, defective items. So just to put more uh, responsibility and uh, uh, to come up with more uh, protection for consumers by the platform itself. We uh, propose that uh, provision, the solidarity liability, Mr. Chair. But I would like to ask Mr. Michalak, Mr. Chair, I want to take advantage of his presence. He made mention of ASEAN best practices. And I would like to know, Mr. Chair, from Mr. Michalak, what are the ASEAN best practices when it comes to this, this particular um users in which uh the products are outside of the philippines or beyond reach of our ordinary consumers and the platform can just easily say that i have no control over products, the quality of the products the the legality of the products and so on and so forth so in this type of cases mr chair well i don't know exactly what types of legal uh, what types of legal uh, what types of legal approaches are being used? But uh, in general, um, most platforms, most internet platforms, have certain principles which are free and open uh, and open on the uh, uh, on the internet, which all persons who use that platform are expected to follow. Uh, these are not; uh, they're not uh, uh, don't have criminal penalties or anything of that nature, but uh, they are, in general, uh, ones which, uh, as far as we've been able to tell over the many, many years in which people have been using the Internet, uh, by and large are sufficient uh, to prevent most of the egregious uh, violations of, uh, of uh, product uh, quality and, and safety. Um, 
individual countries, of course, have their own laws and products of any type which are in those uh, countries. You know, the, they have their own procedures uh, with which to follow these things. Many countries already have um, laws for sending uh, different types of uh, packages through the postal services. Um, and these do not do not call the postal service into uh, uh, liability. Uh, so there are many different types of things, and I would have to actually uh, do some research to come up with uh, to give you a little report on that. But I will see if we have uh, some documentation somewhere that would more fully answer that question. Thank you, Mr. Michal. I would greatly appreciate, uh, again, you're, uh, we recognize your international presence and you have members who have international stature. Uh, we would greatly appreciate if you can uh, uh, provide the committee some best practices uh, sure. in terms of laws, regulations, or even policies uh, so that uh, we will have, uh, admittedly, this is a new venture for most countries. and. Uh, a lot of countries are copying each other and learning from each other, so it's good to uh, to, to to get some ideas outside of the Philippines. Surely. Thank you, Senator Sherwin. And uh, the Joint and Solidary Liability is actually one of the uh, innovations, uh, one of the new ideas uh, which this bill tries to introduce into our laws. So. Uh, if the, B, the BSP ready to make a presentation, but okay, uh, in the meantime, yes, uh, I can see Yusek Ruth Castello of DTI. Uh, Yusek Castello, I received an opinion that uh, the DTI can already take care of this, uh, all of these uh, ano daw, uh, fraudulent practices that we see. Totoo ba yun? Are you, do you think you have sufficient power right now to discipline uh sellers who, in, who engage in fraudulent practices or to minimize uh, enough enough with enough deterrence to minimize uh, fraud cases in internet transactions um yes good afternoon mr chair and uh, honorable senators in this august body um mr chair just for the information of everyone the dti fair trade enforcement bureau uh, practices a no wrong door policy so we we accept all kinds of consumer complaints, whether it's offline or online, meaning whether it's in a physical store or in a virtual store. Uh, we are able to resolve them, sir, and we elevate to other agencies uh, that have jurisdiction over the complaints. But um, this is only for those that we can find. Um, the difficulty that we have in the Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau is that there is no official registry of all online platforms or online sellers in the country, which will be addressed by the Internet Transactions Act. When the seller cannot be found or has taken down the page or the website or cannot be located, never provided any physical address, um, we will have to request the consumer to bring the the device to us so we can bring it to the CIDG Cybercrime Division or the NBI and then track the IP address. That is why we are recommending, Mr. Chair, the complete registry of online of all online sellers, whether it's an individual merchant or a platform for easier protection to the consumer. Also, the liability currently, Mr. Chair, um, well, I have to be fair to the big platforms, the big known platforms. Um, when it is DTI that calls their attention, they immediately resolve the complaint of the consumer. But this is for them who are popular, who are reputable, and who are known. So those that are not known in the Philippines and those that we have no access with, uh, we will have no means to be able to protect the consumer, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out, because if we pass a law, it applies to all. And precisely, we are not passing this law for the big popular shopping online platforms because they have, I think, an efficient way of uh, reimbursing uh, uh, the, the buyers who have, who have complaints. Or addressing the concern. Yes, or sir. addressing the concern yes, or re replacing the product. You know, but, uh, Problem is if uh, a seller who is, let's call it a fraudulent seller, organized in another country can simply, uh, once the 
the name, the seller's name, has been tainted with complaints. If we don't know the rules in the country of origin, they can just simply make up another corporate name or company name, and then it's the same fraudulent seller behind that new entity. So I think that yes, is Mr. A, Chair. That's a problem. Yes, yes, you said. Yes, Mr. Chair, if I may add also, currently what we do is uh, contact the, because we have no registry of the individual merchants within platforms. So we contact the platforms directly, and it's the platforms that we hold responsible for addressing the consumer concern. So if we do not hold the platform responsible and the online merchant within that that platform cannot be found there will no be there will be no way for us to address the concern of the consumer mr chair mr chair may i yes, yes senator pia Caetano. yes thank you mr chair on that last comment no, of um uh yusek yusek ruth um on on holding the the platforms liable. So the first point that you made is that when you deal with the bigger online platforms, they respond immediately, which is a good thing. Huh? But the second thing about therefore you need to hold them accountable. I agree you need to hold them accountable, but solidarity liability is not the only way you can hound them accountable. You can hound, hold them accountable for violating certain rules or the law that we put in that would require them to do certain things. No? So if they are aware that that um harmful products are being sold toxic products are being sold you hold them accountable for that you don't hold them solidarily accountable they're violating fda laws they're violating um laws specifically or regulations but not solidarily accountable because there seems to be this mis um conception that the only way you can hold them accountable is through solidary liability it's not the only way you can find them you can you can quote other laws that prohibit that they allow the sale of those products, but solidarity liability is different. The second point I want to raise, Mr. President, is we have a concept of buyer beware, no? And I think part of the job of DTI and our other agencies is to help our people understand what they can do to protect themselves. Therefore, the reason why these big online um, online uh, platforms are somewhat popular. And they go to because of because of the investments that they've put in to try to set up that platform in a in possibly a safer or more business friendly way. That's why they can afford to have their own uh, consumer protection. They can have their co customer complaints. They can respond to you immediately because they invested in this. So if the people know that, then that's why I would be more comfortable buying from an unknown seller that's in a platform because mahahabol ko siya doon. It's the difference between yung panahon siguro ng mga lolo at lola natin, there's a peddler that will go through town, you will never see that peddler again. Siguro mas secure sila to buy from the neighborhood grocery, di ba? That's the difference. So it's not because um, we're trying to make it easy for one and hard on another, but we also have to educate our, our people on what um, platforms provide a certain amount of security for them and which ones do not. That's also the reason why um, my daughters and my staff would tell me, Ma'am, ito maraming rating. Four-star rating to, five-star rating to. Makikita mo dun sa kanyang uh, history that people are, are happy with the service. Or sometimes they are happy with the service, but they are not happy with the product. That's the point of all that. And these online platforms invest in that. They should not be penalized because they invested in that. That is the difference between these online platforms or uh, something as simple as a Bi Viber group. Now, I live in Alabang. There's an Alabang uh, Facebook group. The reason why people are comfortable going there is because they kind of know each other's faces. So that they can say that, oh, that, that, that uh, product is from our neighbor. So that's the check and balance there. You can't, you can't insist on putting any other kind because it's meant to be a neighborhood online um, platform. So there are different reasons for different platforms. We cannot just insist to regulate all of them in the same way because they function differently. So Mr. President, I hope we take that, Mr. Chair, I hope we take that into consideration and we get the response of DTI on that because it's different platforms. You can't just say that all of them will be treated the same way. Thank you. Uh, is BSP ready? Uh, Sige. Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. BSP is ready. Mr. Choco, the one? Yes, sir. Uh, Sige, sir. 
Let's have the BSP presentation. Okay. Uh, honorable Chair and distinguished senators, esteemed colleagues from the government and the private sector, good afternoon. And it is my privilege to attend and participate in this community, this uh, committee hearing. The BSP supports objectives of Senate Bill Number One Nine One, Transactions Act, and it is our desire at the BSP to have these internet transactions settled or paid via online means. Driven by the desire to empower every one and Maria to easily pay and safely perform their financial transactions. The BSP embarked on a mission to address the challenge faced by every Filipinos in making payments, effectively undertaking a reform and modernization program of the country's retail payment system. Uh, unlike the usual approach of setting up new infrastructures or technological solutions, the BSP addressed the root cause of inefficiencies in the retail payment system by developing the National Retail Payment System Framework, or what we call the NRPS, which outlined the rules towards achieving effective and efficient interoperability, fostering innovation, and promoting fair access and competition among participants, among others. Through the principle of co-opetition, Financial institutions, regardless of their size, are able to share infrastructure in areas of mutual interest. Meanwhile, interoperability allows consumers to transfer funds to accounts in other financial institutions, including non-banks, thereby expanding the access and use of electronic payments to support a wide range of financial transactions responsive to the public public's payment needs. The ability to move funds faster from one hand to another, generate more transactions and spurs economic activities, thereby increasing the country's GDP. The NRPS envisions to grow electronic payments in the country through interoperability, which will enable each Filipino to make and receive various payment transactions, such as bills payment, utility payments, tax payments, remittances, in easy, convenient, affordable, and most importantly, secure way. Your Honor, we prepared a short video presentation to encapsulate how the NRPS can empower everyone and Maria in the country to reap the benefits of a cash light economy. Uh, can, can we request the secretariat to show the, the video how, now? How short, sir, is the video? How short? Wait, wait, uh, about three minutes. Uh, okay, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Is it over? <laughs> yeah. we, are, we are having a technical problem in the video. There's no sound. Yes. Mr. Chair, it hasn't begun. <laughs> yeah. 
I've seen a few slides. <laughs> Tapang sound daw, may technical problem pala. Uh, sig sig yeah. uh, Mr. Stoko, maybe you can just uh, continue with your... Yeah. Well, uh, a very Filipino. He receives his salary through his ATM account and pays his bills regularly. Like a majority of Filipinos, he prefers to use cash for his payment transactions, even if most of it can easily be made through various means such as debit and credit cards, internet banking, and electronic money. Every pay period, he withdraws all of his salary from his ATM account. His reasons? There are limited transactions he can do through an ATM. Even though there's an option for bills payment, he can't pay his bills since the merchants are not among his bank's list of merchants. Even though his ATM card is a debit card, only big merchants accept it as a means of payment. Other merchants prefer to receive cash. Unauthorized transactions and offline terminals can really be an inconvenience. He prefers to withdraw all of his salary than be bothered by this problem. We also have Maria, a shop owner. Even if she buys some of her merchandise online, she prefers to do her transactions in cash. Her reasons. There are so many steps to follow when buying online and choosing to pay using her bank account. First, she has to access the website of the merchant and the payment gateway. Then, she would have to proceed to an ATM to make a fund transfer. After which, she would have to submit the payment details to the payment gateway for validation. Rather than go through all these procedures, she just chooses the option cash on delivery. As a shop owner, she personally prefers to receive payments in cash because she can immediately use it to buy more supplies rather than wait for funds to be cleared for the next three days. And fund transfer to her account would cost her at least 150 pesos, which she doesn't see the value of, especially when the funds are not made available to her immediately. These are the issues an ordinary Filipino faces when engaging in electronic payment transactions. The National Retail Payment System, or NRPS, addresses these issues by defining high-level policies, principles, and standards, which, when adopted, would lead to the establishment of a safe, fast, and convenient retail payment system. It is a policy and regulatory framework that aims to provide direction in carrying out electronic payment activities. So what are the benefits of NRPS? Payments will be faster and more efficient. Payments will be easier as transferring funds from one account to another can be done immediately, even if the accounts are from different financial institutions. Payments will be secure and reliable. Since the system is regulated, principles and standards are strictly implemented to ensure the security of transactions and activities performed in the country's retail payment system, as well as the resiliency of its operations against disruptive events. This way, ordinary Filipinos like Juan and Maria will be able to experience safe, fast, and convenient retail payment system. But it's not only the ordinary Filipino who is happy. Even small and big businesses are more than glad to know that through NRPS, funds can readily be made available to recipients, allowing them to do their purchases at once. Likewise, through NRPS, government collections and disbursements shall be safe, fast, and convenient across all stakeholders. This increase in the velocity of transactions results in the creation of more economic transactions that eventually impacts the country's GDP. This is NRPS, our way to a safe, fast, and convenient retail payment system, which empowers everyone and Maria.
Thank you, BSP, for the presentation. You can continue, sir, if there are some other points. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, from the video presentation, we have seen what electronic payments can do for each Filipino and for our country. And electronic payments also help overcome the compl complicated and extremely costly process of physically collecting cash payment for a product purchase or sold online. So it is for these reasons that the BSP lends its uh, support to the laudable objectives of the proposed bill by closely collaborating with critical stakeholders from the government, including the Department of Trade in the, and Industry and the private sector. And we hope that through the help of our partners from the public and private sector, we can not only achieve our goal of a cash light economy, but also enable more Filipinos to reap the benefits of a growing economy. That, that's all, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ischoko of the BSP. Uh, Committee Secretary, please uh, uh, go to the chat room and then read the comments. Make sure that we acknowledge all of the groups and resource persons uh, present this afternoon. Please, please uh, take a look, take a look, and then tell me if we have not yet acknowledged uh, some of them. Uh, uh, okay, so okay, this is a continuation of uh, a hearing we conducted in early September. So that means that we have already discussed some of the aspects or contents of the bill. So sometimes we are repeating some concepts, and then some, some, sometimes we will be. Uh, so, and, and, and some would be uh, presenting new perspectives, no? So, so let us continue. Uh, I think some groups have already submitted position papers, and during the last hearing, some were ready to give presentation, but we ran out of time. So, who who else wants to make a comment or a presentation? from yeah yes yes this attorney santos of the F philippine retailers association was also present in the last uh uh hearing and then siguro uh, and and also laban consumer laban I think, uh, chairman okay yeah. and then up up law center uh, attorney decini so so, ganun, uh, so my commitment is attorney santos then laban consumer and then uh, attorney decini of the up law center so, uh, go ahead just uh, miss attorney santos Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you uh, to the committee for the opportunity to speak uh, about uh, Senate Bill Number 1591. Uh, yeah, in the interest of time, I'd just like to uh, make known my, my observations uh, about, the, about the bill, uh, which is, I think, a worthy effort by, by the Senate to, uh, to, uh, to uh, encourage the growth of e-commerce within uh, regulatory flame, or within a regulatory framework that will benefit uh, all uh, all stakeholders uh, in this emerging business. However, there are some uh, observations that I would like you to make uh, that I think uh, I want to <laughs> For example, uh, if we look at Section 4 uh, of, of the bill, it mentions uh, the scope and coverage of the activities uh, that are sought to be regulated by the proposed internet transaction bill, you know, uh, consumer goods, uh, services, and, and so on. Now, uh, right now, these activities are now being regulated by uh, the respective, uh, respective government agencies, like for consumer goods, it's BTI, travel services, uh, I did, uh, it's between uh, to the Department of Tourism, uh, flight is Department of Transportation, uh, for video on demand, that's MPRCB, financial services, uh, BSP, by the BSP, and so on. However, uh, there, there seems to be a, a conflict of jurisdiction here because historically these activities uh, have been managed by uh, the government agencies that I just mentioned. But if you look at Section 10 bill, uh, Section 10 gives the uh, DTI primary regulatory jurisdiction over the e-commerce activities mentioned in Section 4. Uh, I think that that could create conflict 
when uh, these agencies that already manage the activities mentioned in Section 4 are already specialized in, in monitoring and regulating them. And I think for, for the purpose of developing the ability of these agencies to monitor the uh, e-commerce aspect of the businesses that they would like to regulate, that they are regulating, I'm sorry, I think uh, they should be given the, the, the primary jurisdiction to regulate the e-commerce aspect of their own, uh, of, the, of the particular activities that they're in charge of, uh, rather than having uh, DTI having primary jurisdiction over, uh, over, uh, over that particular e-commerce aspect. We have a situation here when uh, the, an agency like, for example, uh, let's say the Department of Transportation, who is in charge of, say, face-to-face uh, -face, uh, sales of airline tickets and so on, with the sole exception of e-commerce, where uh, DTI would have primary jurisdiction. So uh, why not continue with the current practice and let these agencies manage the e-commerce aspect of the businesses that they already uh, regulate? Second uh, is Section 5, the creation of the uh, e-commerce bureau. Uh, one thing that I immediately noticed with the creation of the e-commerce bureau is that I think it will create a it will uh, introduce a substantial uh, increase uh, in in the government bureaucracy uh, at a time when we need to uh, uh, to uh, uh, devote all of our resources to COVID-19 response. Uh, for example, in the case of the e-commerce bureau, uh, we have uh, six deputy commissioners and their respective staff. So that would create uh, a significant increase in in uh, in the bureaucracy. And second, in the case of the e-commerce bureau, uh, you would notice that it has several functions uh, that I think are mutually incompatible. Uh, apart from uh, recommending policy. Uh, uh, monitoring trends. It also has regulatory functions as well, which I think uh, would detract from the, the mission of the e-commerce bureau. Uh, is it a regulator? Is it is it is, is, is its job to promote? Uh, is its job to promote uh, e-commerce? I, I think, uh, like what I mentioned earlier, uh, the regulatory aspect of e-commerce should be devoted solely to those agencies that are already regulate. Uh, businesses covered under Section 4. And perhaps the e-commerce, the proposed e-commerce bureau should only devote itself to uh, monitoring uh, business e-commerce trends, uh, to recommend policy, uh, and to promote e-commerce in general as a means of entrepreneurship in the, in the Philippines, uh, rather than having a, a split personality both promoting business at the same time regulating the same. And, uh, and, uh, what was, and yes, I think, uh, also, uh, in, in the bill, uh, I think the bill should, uh, should confine itself mainly to the more novel aspects of e-commerce. Uh, for example, the bill makes mention of of certain provisions like warranty that are already covered by existing law. I think in this case, uh, there are existing laws, for example, in like in the civil code whose, uh, whose uh, coverage and definitions are broad enough uh, that they now they could embrace uh, aspects of e-commerce. And I think uh, uh, these, uh, whatever possible, these provisions should be uh, should be allowed to uh, to, uh, to remain in force, uh, uh, and uh, the bill itself should confine itself. The bill should confine itself to the more uh, novel aspects of e-commerce that have yet to be uh, legislated upon. Like, for example, the sale of intangible goods over the internet, like software, apps, books, music, uh, and so on. Uh, that uh, I think, in terms of uh, warranties and whatnot have yet to be addressed by existing law simply because they never existed in the case of the civil code. They never existed way back in 1949. And last, uh, going back to the definitions mentioned uh, in section three, uh, I, I think 
uh, the the bill should should strive to use those definitions that are that are already in common use uh, in business and among consumers. So uh, more or less, we have a more uh, consistent definition uh, that, that businesses know of, consumers know of. So we don't have to uh, to uh, adopt a special definition for certain activity or for certain goods or services that already that have already acquired uh, uh, a common definition uh, in the years leading to the enactment of this bill. Uh, that's all, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, okay. thank you for thank for you, this sir. opportunity. Okay, uh, I can see I can see in our chat room that uh, uh, a lot of our uh, resource persons present this afternoon want to say want to present something. So my appeal is, if you can limit your presentation to three to five, maximum five minutes, but in your position papers, which is in writing, you, you can make it as detailed uh, as you want. No, uh, but before I recognize the next presenter, let me acknowledge for the record our our resource persons who who. who uh, Arrived, arrived or logged, logged in late, no? Uh, ASEC, Jean Pacheco, DTI, Mr. Vic Dimagiba of Laban Consumer, Attorney Rafael Kalinasan from the Internet Mobile Marketing Association of the Philippines, Ima Abdul Rahim of uh, Facebook, and Mary Grace Mirandilia Santos of Secure Connections under Asia Foundation. They are all present this afternoon. Uh, so, Attorney Santos, thank you. Uh. So, uh, uh, I think I promised uh, Laban Consumer. Mr. Attorney Dimagiba, sir, we are ready to hear you. Actually, we we called this uh, second hearing precisely to give you a chance to make a presentation, all of you. Pero uh, try our best three to five minutes uh, if possible. Mr. Dimagiba, any time, sir, that you're ready? I think he got disconnected. Ah, is he ready? Is Attorney Dimagiba online? Mr. Chairman, can you hear me now? Uh, yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, 11 pages lang po to, Mr. Chairman. No? So, can we go to the next slide, please? Oh, so, 10 na lang. <laughs> Introduction lang yan kung sino ako. <laughs> Page 2. All right. The chairman, uh, ito namang second slide eh, is a uh, typical template provision in any bill on consumer protection. No? So we propose to add a section on construction, which is copied from Article 3 of the Consumer Act of the Philippines. It shall state that the best interest of the consumers shall be considered in the interpretation and implementation of the provision of this act, including its implementing rules and regulations. Okay, the next slide is, uh, in addition, uh, I got this, uh, Mr. Chairman, because uh, Laban Consumer Inc. is a member of the Consumers International, and I want to inform the committee that what we are doing here is actually what the other countries in the world are also doing at the moment, meaning uh, putting in their own national law in so far as uh, internet transactions is concerned. So this is actually a recommendation of the Consumer International that in our national law, we, sh we should propose to incorporate a provision to adopt international, regional, and bilateral agreements and other internationally agreed principles of consumer protection on cross-border electronic commerce. So that's laying the basis. It's very good to have these principles also incorporated in our national law. Now going into the substance of the bill, Mr. Chairman, we propose to adopt in the definition of terms, the definition of a distributor, a retailer, a seller, and supplier 
this definition are taken from Article 4, paragraphs AC, BK, PN, and BU of the Consumer Act of the Philippines. We are of the opinion, laban consumer, that internet merchants, in whatever capacity they are at the moment, they are either are all or any of the above. That is, they are a distributor, a retailer, and seller, and supplier of goods and services. The chairman, this, this definition of term will solve a lot of issues as the committee will probably go into technical working group, particularly on the matter of, I heard the first item discussed is the issue of joint and solidary liability or subsidiary liability. The Consumer Act, Mr. Chairman, has a wealth of provisions that will define the liabilities of a distributor, a retailer, a seller, and supplier. And that should be very helpful as we craft this internet transaction law. Uh, we also provide, Mr. Chairman, on the definition of consumer, we noted that we define consumer in this bill to include juridical entity. Um, as I will show later on, uh, we propose that we should retain the universal definition as referring only to natural persons. And I will explain later in the subsequent slide. Next. Uh, uh, we propose also to include a new provision which will require online selling platforms to submit to the e-commerce bureau, or we propose to rename as e-commerce commission, a copy of what we call a merchant agreement or a third party supplier agreement or it's a equivalent, which shall contain, among others, the terms and conditions of the parties that shall govern the entry of the merchants and suppliers to sell goods and services in the online platform, compliance to Philippine laws and regulations, such as the Consumer Act of the Philippines, including payment of taxes and payment options and facilities. We also propose a provision that shall require all online platforms to submit full disclosure to the e-commerce bureau or e-commerce commission, whether they sell their own goods and services or through their third party suppliers directly to the consumers. And this is also found in Senate Bill 1808, Section 4 B and D. Uh, next slide. We propose to add the provision that shall authorize the Philippine Competition Commission to investigate and enforce under the Competition Act any commission of acts by the online selling platforms, merchants, and third party suppliers that may violate the competition law to the prejudice of the consumers. Actually, Mr. Chairman, just an introductory note in some jurisdictions, particularly in North America and in Europe. The antitrust agencies that are already looking at the big online selling platform as to whether are they competing are they competing with their own merchants when they sell their own goods or are they giving priority to selling only goods of the third party suppliers to the prejudice of the independent merchants and a lot of other uh, competition issues could be happening, Mr. Chairman, in the internet transaction as we crop our own law. So anyway, we have the Philippine Competition Commission already in existence, so this is one mandate that they can also study. You know, you know we have learned our lesson, Mr. Chairman, about a year ago when suddenly uh, two big uh, ride-hailing services, uh, uh, one bought the others and uh, it, you know, we don't want to happen that now when we have two, three big online selling platforms. And the consumers will be left with only one, one uh, major selling platform for, for their exercise of right to choose. We also propose, Mr. Chairman, that uh, in addition to the powers of the e-commerce bureau, there should be a creation of a special registration website where companies and individuals can register their stores. And there should be an e extensive consumer campaign awareness program that will inform consumers to transact only with registered stores. 
uh, the e-commerce bureau could also enter into bilateral or regional agreements with consumer protection agencies that shall address cross-border consumer complaints. Uh, also, to require to disclose the country of origin of the products on sale, especially to address matter of product quality, safety, and standard compliance for the benefit of consumer. We do not endorse Section 13 of SB 1591, consistent with our objection on the definition of consumer. Consumer complaint handling and resolution should be independent and separate from merchants' disputes. We are of the opinion that Section 13 will prolong the resolution period of the complaint to the prejudice of the consumers. The merchants' dispute should be governed by existing laws and rules on civil cases. On Section 15 of SB 1591, red damages, we believe the chairman a quasi judicial body would not be in a position to award damages. On Section 17 of SB 1591 and Section 18 of SB 1808, we propose a straightforward joint and solidary liability amongst online platform and merchants. The provision as worded is litigious and can prejudice the consumer rights for repair and honest resolution of the complaints. And read into an earlier proposal to adopt the definition of definition of distributor, retailer, seller, and supplier, because internet merchants can any or all of these four categories. The Consumer Act, the Chairman, has is already established the liability of all these categories of merchants. And finally, because we propose uh, definitions in the Consumer Act that are relevant to internet merchants, we propose a general provision. I'm not sure whether it's supplementary or applicability provision that shall provide that any and all provisions of the Consumer Act of the Philippines that are applicable to internet transactions shall remain enforceable and applicable. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for the opportunity you gave the Ban Consumer to present our position paper. We have also submitted a written position paper of this PowerPoint material. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You will always be welcome in all the hearings of uh, this committee. Para po sa inyo ito. So, okay, reminder na, uh, uh, another reminder, if you can keep your presentation maximum five minutes, but in your position papers, you can be as detailed as possible. So after after UP Law Center, uh, let me commit na. Uh, let me commit who will be next. Uh, but before that, let me acknowledge uh, the presence of Attorney Grace Mangrubang of the CDA, the Cooperative Development Authority. So after UP Law Center, we can hear from I think Facebook wants to be heard, and then I M M A P. Okay, so, so Attorney Dicini of UP Law Center, it's your turn, sir. Uh, thank you, JJ, okay. sir, Mr. Chao. Uh, I'll be very brief. Uh, I wanted to, uh, to address this issue about uh, uh, regulation and regulation by the Philippine government. And, uh, and I want to take it from the standpoint of investment and entrepreneurship. So. Uh, we have a very thriving look at it, and I urge uh, the members of the community to look at uh, our, our thriving fintech community, uh, which are locally located. They are local corporations, and there is no argument among them, nor is there any complaint that they are actually regulated, and they have local Philippine presence. Uh, Gcash, for example, is owned by Alibaba. Paymaya is owned by Tencent and other foreign investors. And they have local uh, local uh, presence, you know, physical presence, and they are licensed by the BSP. So regulation, I think, is not really uh, an issue, uh, Mr. President, given that even in the United States, if we're talking about uh, best practices, uh, the United States regulates uh, uh, platforms. In fact, the most famous uh, example right now is TikTok. Uh, uh, President, the President of the United States issued an executive order requiring TikTok to be bought by uh, American shareholders. And in fact, that, that deal is currently being pushed through. They're under threat of being removed from the app store. Uh, so it's not 
it's not a question, Mr. President, of whether or not uh, it's it's uh, uh, whether it's right or wrong to regulate. The question is whether it's in our and I and I believe there is an argument uh, to be said that it is in the interest of Philippine entrepreneurship and investment to allow regulation. And my example is the fintech industry. In other industries, Mr. President, where there is no regulation, a lot of local entrepreneurs are actually choosing not to like, not to operate in the Philippines. Because if they can operate from an offshore platform, they would rather operate from an offshore platform. Why? It makes sense from a tax standpoint. It makes sense from a, from all other standpoints. But what, what is the effect? The effect is that this is entrepreneurial spirit that should have been located here that would have had to uh, spend money and actually uh, 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 employ people locally or even their income recognized in this jurisdiction. Instead, they choose a jurisdiction that is different from uh, so apart from the uh, so this is and, and so what's happening, Mr. President, that uh, Philippine entrepreneurial spirit is being uh, devoted elsewhere. When having some regulation here, requiring some local presence, may drive that investment locally. And I would urge an, uh, the comparison between what's happening in the fintech space where we're seeing a lot of entrepreneurship and we're seeing a lot of local uh, foreign domestic investment, sorry, foreign direct investment, and all other spaces in the tech industry. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Dicini of the UP Law Center. Okay, uh, I, th I think I promised uh, Facebook. Ma'am, uh, Ima. Thank you so much. Yes, Ima. Uh, yes, okay. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Magandang hapon po. Uh, my name is Ima Abdurrahim. I am um, the Director of Public Policy uh, for Facebook. I'm based in Singapore. Um, thank you so much for having Facebook participate in today's discussion. Um, the growth and development of e-commerce businesses is a vital opportunity, we feel, for the Philippines, especially in light of COVID-19 and its resulting hard hardships for many people. Small businesses are the heartbeat of our community, and we recognize that, and many of the people who run these businesses are heavily affected by the crisis. The longer the crisis goes on, the greater the risk to small businesses and to the livelihoods of their owners and employees. At Facebook, we want to make it easier and help businesses operating in this new and unsettling environment. But we also have tools like Marketplace, which allows users who just want to dispose of excess items they have for sale, a platform to connect with a wider pool of potential buyers. The term e-commerce can potentially encompass such a wide variety of roles, from virtual classifieds to virtual department stores. This diversity means that a one-size-fits-all regulation will in reality be difficult to implement implement effectively and may have unintended consequences of stifling innovation opportunities and future investments. As an example, unlike traditional e-commerce, e Facebook does not carry or hold inventory, nor is Facebook involved in the dispatch or delivery of the products purchased nor does Facebook take payment or partake in the monetary transaction between businesses and customers. And therefore, Facebook's offering is very different and unique to traditional e-commerce, making the application of this law infeasible. Media landscapes and the diversity of roles fulfilled by technology companies have been evolving rapidly and we will continue to do so. We respectfully encourage collaborative and flexible approaches to account for the needs and future growth of different service offerings and where appropriate, allow companies to build best practices and innovate to improve on enforcement of existing relevant standards. At Facebook, we have our community standards, ads policies and commerce policies, which apply to content and ads across our services, including product listings. We encourage people to report violating content by making it simple to do so. Simply tap on the three dots in the top right hand corner of the post or ad and a single report is enough for us to take action on violating content. We are also constantly investing in resources and technology to ensure integrity of our platform. For example, we utilize scale detection technology to help prevent scam ads. When we are made aware of violating content, we take action, which may include deleting a content, suspending accounts, and in certain instances, we have taken further legal action against those responsible for violating our rules. 
We have filed a legal suit against a company that violated Facebook's terms and policies by operating pages and running ads that misled Facebook users into visiting their websites and providing contact information, which was then collected and sold to online marketers and advertisers. We also have an established process whereby we will respond to valid legal requests by law enforcement made in accordance with due legal process and regulators as they try to identify and pursue these bad actors. We also share information with law enforcement and regulators in cases where it might be necessary to prevent fraud or other types of illegal activity. We are definitely excited about the opportunities that digital platforms such as Facebook can provide for the economy in the Philippines and the society and community. And we look forward to more constructive dialogue and continue to support the Philippines' continued digital growth and transformation. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Uh, next would be the Internet Mobile Marketing Association of the Philippines, it's Attorney Kalin Nisan. Uh, good afternoon, po, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes. Sir Kupo, po, magandang hapon po. Long time are, you, si po. Are, you, are you the Ralph that I know? Yes, sir. Of course, of course sir. Okay, okay. Opo, long time no see, sir. Long time, yes, yes. Happy to see you, sir. Hindi uh, po kalingasan, sir, kalinisan. Long time, sir. Anyway, what, uh, I'm, what, I'm what here did, to... What did I say? What did I say? I said, kalingasan po. Uh, Magkatap po na nga po sana ako, sir, that nakalimutan mo na ako. Eh. Okay, it's kalinisan. Yes, attorney kalinisan, yes, yes. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. That being said, sir, um, I'm representing the Internet and Mobile Marketing Association of the Philippines, or the IMAP. Incidentally, I'm also the lawyer of the Kapisanan ng mga broadcaster ng Pilipinas and the Ad Standards Council. Um, while we actually laud and support the bill, we actually uh, are in support of the policy of the state to promote the growth of electronic commerce in the country. Uh, all three organizations have actually some concerns uh, on this bill. And just to make a manifestation, a very, very short manifestation, Your Honor, that uh, the IMAP, the Ad Standards Council and the KBP, the, the AASC and the KBP have, have not yet been invited formally to these proceedings, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. But we will be submitting three separate position papers uh, on uh, this proposed Senate bill. Um, due to the you are most welcome to do so. Committee Secretary, please uh, take note. Thank you. Uh, that being said, Mr. Chair, may we request that the Ad Standards Council and the KBP be formally invited uh, to for to, the next okay to future hearings or to the twg uh meetings itself okay yes sir that will be most welcome sir thank you sir go ahead no more no more uh, no more uh, observations Panero? is that is that it uh, sir to abbrev to abbreviate the proceeding sir uh i will just submit a position paper for uh, three separate position papers for these three organizations. Thank you, and then uh, and uh, please participate in the technical working group. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, so, yeah. I think uh, secure connections. Uh, Mary Grace Santos wants to make a presentation. After that, I don't know, let's go to uh, what is ICT 4D. You 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 will be next. Okay, so okay. Ma Ma'am Santos first. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I am Mary Grace Mirandilla Santos from Secure Connections. It's a project under the Asia Foundation. Um, our position is focused primarily on ensuring the protection of consumers, specifically promoting in information security and data privacy. Um, we would like to uh, recommend that uh, there should be provisions in Senate Bill 1591 adopting and implementing minimum information security standards that can apply to all. Um, this will also include a section that, um, for example, under the Code of Conduct in Section 7, um, as part of the obligations of online merchants, that may um, be required to comply with minimum information security standards that may be set by the proposed e-commerce bureau. Third, we would like to require also as the responsibility of online merchants the protection of um, consumers' privacy rights on its um, online platform. Fourth, we would like to clarify how online merchants can gain an e-commerce Philippine trust mark um, under Section 20. 
um, we believe that this should include or, or gaining an e-commerce Philippine trust mark should include a verification process for an online merchant um, to be able to get that trust mark. Um, we recommend that um, part of the requirement should be um, that under the code of conduct, the online merchant should adhere with certain standards, including those for information security and data privacy of consumers. Um, fifth, um, we would also like to um, recommend that under Section 20, that representatives from professional organizations with expertise on information security and data privacy uh, become members as part of the industry-led private sector governance body. Um, next is, um, we would like to clarify, um, this was also discussed by uh, the previous speakers, we would like to clarify if the bill also includes digital financial systems, um, but we manifest that we believe that the bill should not cover digital financial systems. Um, the SEC and the BSP are already functioning as the primary guardians of the stability and security of platforms of the stock exchange, uh, mobile banking, ATMs, etc. Um, so we, we would like to um, manifest that uh, such digital financial systems be no longer required. Uh, we have a more detailed um, description of all of our uh, recommended amendments and clarifications in the position paper that we submitted to the committee. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much for this opportunity to share our position. Ms. Santos, do you have a copy of the bill before you? Can you take, if you have, can you take a, can you take a look at section 4E? Is that the, is that the financial systems that you mentioned? Because it's, it's, it's under scope and coverage. So if, if that is under 4E, then the answer to your question is yes. Is that what you have in mind, your 4E? Okay. Financial services offered through di digital online platforms, such as online payments, remittances, online lending, online investment, and online insurance services. Does that, what, does that uh, definition cover the financial systems that you just Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, we would like to clarify that mobile payment, any, any form of um, financial uh, transactions that are already covered by the BSP and the SEC, um, we recommend that they not be included in the bill uh, because um, it might it might cause a um, diffusion of uh, the the functions and responsibilities that are already in place, and we believe that we should avoid overlapping enforcement um, agencies, and instead recommend that the SEC and the BSP, for example. Uh, beef up their budget and resources in order to have a proper audit and enforcement arm um, in their in their own organizations that will ensure consumer protection, um, data privacy, and security as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it, how about ICT 4D? Is that the same as uh, your group, Ms. Santos? Same uh, uh, yes, sir. Um, okay, we uh, we belong to the same group. Okay, so uh, let's go to the let's hear the other groups which have requested to be uh, recognized. So uh, on my list is Zalora. Zalora, then Shapi. Okay, so Zalora, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Mr. Paolo Campos of Zalora, please go ahead, sir. Thank you, deliberations regarding Senate Bill 1591. Uh, we commend the committee for pushing this bill forward and recognizing the vital role e-commerce and digital technology plays in current times, especially in light of the COVID-19 crisis our country continues to face. Uh, we are happy that the Senate sees the immense potential of e-commerce in our country, and we are supportive of the bill's intention to promote the sustainable growth of e-commerce and hone an environment founded on trust among consumers and merchants. 
Um, our company owns the Zalora website, one of the pioneering e-commerce platforms in the Philippines. Um, as a company that carries uh, carefully curated and authentic products, we agree with the objective of the bill to address problems uh, e-commerce currently faces. Uh, we want to highlight that the principle behind consumer protection aligns very well with, uh, with our uh, thrust as a company to place con uh, customer welfare as our top priority. Uh, we are generally open to the developments proposed in the bill um, as it is consistent with our company's governance and compliance procedures. Uh, to establish trust among consumers and merchants, we agree that it is important to ensure that the good is having one of, if not the strictest onboarding standards and due diligence requirements to ensure that our sellers uh, comply with each of these um, and uh, with the laws and regulations pertinent to the sale of their products. Uh, however, to be helpful, if the bill enumerated the specific documents and requirements e-commerce platforms are required to obtain from its sellers, uh, as this would uh, help us determine if our current due diligence requirements are and processes are indeed sufficient. Um, one thing we noticed missing in the Senate bill is a statement on uh, equal treatment of online and offline commercial activities. Uh, in order to advance fair trade and competition, uh, e-commerce should not be placed at a disadvantage in relation to brick and mortar stores or uh, retail formats. And we ur urge the committee to revisit uh, the provisions on damages, a prescriptive period for filing of complaints, and uh, joint solidarity liability, as has already been uh, mentioned um, numer uh, numerous occasions today, uh, specifically on the requirement of extraordinary due diligence on the part of the e-commerce platform. Uh, these provisions run contrary to the principle of equal treatment between offline and online businesses uh, and we have submitted a more detailed position paper regarding the provisions uh, the technical wording of the provisions which we feel um, would uh, need improvement uh, the right balance needs to be maintained between regulatory protections for consumers and barriers to participation in the internet economy and we uh, enabling increased market competition and benefiting customers and the economy at large. Um, at this point, we want to acknowledge the efforts of the DTI uh, e-commerce office in pushing the e-commerce roadmap forward and uh, truly being supportive of e-commerce growth. Uh, as a company that's operated in the Philippines for eight and a half years now since our founding, uh, DTI has really been a supportive uh, and an enabling partner for us um, uh, throughout our history. Uh, and it's made it easier for platforms like Zalora to coordinate efficiently with government. Uh, we do recognize, though, that establishing a separate e-commerce bureau is definitely a step in the right direction and we believe in the value of establishing a singular office to take ownership um, over e-commerce governance and be a one-stop shop for any registration and compliance requirements businesses in the e-commerce industry are required to follow uh, this would allow for a streamlining of current systems and facilitates prompt resolutions of government transactions uh, which is crucial for an agile industry such as uh, e-commerce um, however, we do have some clarifications over the regulatory jurisdiction uh, of the DTI. Uh, so in summary, I thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, for allowing us to participate in these deliberations, and we look forward to our continued discussion on the Internet Transactions Act. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Next, we'd, next, we'd like to hear from Shopee and then uh, Philippine Competition Commission. Attorney Condes will follow. Oh, Shopee. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for inviting us to participate. What is your name, ma'am? Uh, Mr. Chair, my name is Jem Hans Segovia. Okay. Uh, we, are, we are honored to be here again. Actually, Mr. Chair, we have already shared our position during the last hearing, and we have um, provided details of our position in a paper that we submitted to to this honorable committee. And we are also planning to submit a position paper on Senate Bill 1808. So that's uh, that would be all for Shopee. Thank you very much again, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you for mentioning 1808. That, that was filed by Senator Marcos. So uh, it covers the same subject matter, generally speaking. So uh committee secretary we are we are jointly tackling those two uh those two bills now okay so please everyone uh also try to download uh, or or take a look at senate bill number 1808 filed by senator marcos okay so 
Sa sino sabi ko sunod? After Shopee, ah yes, a reaction from uh, Attorney Faye Condes, please, of the PCC. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just a quick, uh, I guess, reply and reaction. Because earlier, I think um, our representatives from the Laban Consumer made reference to um, additional possible provisions that will uh, enhance the bill uh, and uh, include the PCC in the enforcement. I'd, I'd like to um, reiterate uh, the PCC's uh, position on this matter that um, we believe that uh, with the, if, even if the passage with the passage of this bill as is, um, the provisions of the Philippine Competition Act remains to be technologically neutral and um, will apply with equal force and effect in an e-commerce market. Uh, so um, there are many regulatory frameworks that we currently have in the Philippines right now, good uh, regulations and laws that we already have um, that are also technology neutral and may only need to be further enhanced under the current bills um, uh, in question, um, I'd already, I've, I think we've already uh, uh, expressed our position on the other matters, for example, with respect to uh, the applicability of some rules equally with some brick and mortar. Um, since we're already establishing a law that will deal with the uh, e-commerce market and will regulate platforms, uh, to uh, consider that maybe platforms that will eventually be selling their own goods, for example, or will be manufacturing their own goods. Um, one thing that we are uh, really espousing is that uh, for these um, platforms operating online marketplaces, uh, to be required to observe what we call arm's length transactions with the entities or the, or the online merchants that they have. So what do we mean by this? So, I'm I'm not sure if we've mentioned this already last the last time, but we are recommending that uh, terms in their agreements or friend terms uh, fair fair reasonable and non-discriminatory terms will always be uh, found in the kinds of contracts that they will um, enter into the issue of the um, the solidary liability. Uh, if you could. Uh, we're still trying to beef up our position paper on this matter, Mr. Chair. Our commissioners are very adamant that we provide you with more data before we submit our position paper. But uh, do let me uh, allow me to express some of our points. Um, so uh, we believe that a policy such as this, as it's right now, may narrow the choices of, for example, our very informed consumers who are willing, actually willing, to obtain, for example, lower quality goods at a lower price. It could also end up preventing the entry of small online merchants. So um, uh, with that, um, with this kind of regulatory environment that is currently proposed, uh, the platforms that do decide to operate on the online marketplace with this kind of uh, uh, mandated liability uh, imposed on them, will most likely pass on the prices. So we'll probably have an online retail market with fewer platforms to choose from, with less incentives to make uh, innovative efficiencies, uh, and online sellers selling products at higher prices. Um, so this is just one thing that we are, uh, that we are uh, looking into. Um, we have also made a survey of a number of jurisdictions that already um, kind of regulate their uh, online marketplaces one way or another and deals with solidarity liabilities uh, of their merchants with the uh, platforms. And we will be submitting this to the committee soonest. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Attorney Faye. But please submit the position paper because we got cut off in the course of your presentation. I did not get oh. the complete idea, some of the complete ideas. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so, okay. Uh, uh, I will I will recognize Senator Gachalian, but uh, Google and Lazada, please prepare your uh, presentations. You will be next. Senator Gachalian, please. Thank you. 
Mr. Chair, I just want to ask uh, PCC and uh, go deeper into their analysis. Uh, PCC, Attorney Fay, do you have any uh, analysis on the industry that we are talking about in relation to this law and the regulations, as well as the penalties being proposed by the law? Um, uh, the law calls for regulation and the, cost, the law calls for penalties. And I think it was Facebook who mentioned earlier about unintended consequences, specifically on innovation and hence uh, competition. So from your expert opinion, and also I know you have a lot of analysts and economists uh, looking at the law, what is your opinion uh, in, in terms of competition, uh, in terms of um, in terms of um, encouraging more uh, uh, more uh, sellers and more internet entrepreneurs to come in in relation to the law. In, in short, what is your opinion when it comes to competition in relation to the law? Um, thank you for your question. Uh, am I coming through quickly? I'll just turn off my video. Hello. Am I coming in clearly? I'm sorry. I'm not sure if I'm. Uh, no, now coming. you are. Now, now you are. Earlier you were not. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, let me see if I can um, try and improve my signal. Um, Oh dear. Mm -hmm. Apologies. Am I coming through now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. I, I apologize for that. So obviously, one thing that we also really have to work on is the is the um, connectivity issues. Uh, so yeah, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, so one of the things that we uh, bill, Mr. Chair, is that whole oh, we think that the regulatory framework that it like that it would like to to um to have is really for consumer protection something that of course the PCC uh supports now there are just some several there are some provisions that we think could be improved upon specifically those that deal with um the kinds of liabilities that will that will be or may be imposed on um on the online platforms uh in order to protect our uh, consumers. Um, so there, in the PCC, how we deal with markets is that we have to clearly define what the relevant markets are. Um, that is another issue that we, we would like to clarify with regards to this bill is how do we really define um, the digital products, for example, um, are we really just talking about uh, talking about um, even services that that are digitally delivered, for example? So these are different markets with different implications as to the platforms that they are involved with, and. Uh, um, to be on share, uh, it will require a little bit more of we have all we have done so far, at least with regards to um, uh, the kinds of uh, consumer online retail market is we have surveyed them and uh, tried the uh, frameworks they have spe specifically in the United States and in the EU. So in those uh, jurisdictions, um, uh, they are allowed to um, 
impose strict rules uh, to um, on the platforms, but these are mostly bigger platforms. Uh, when I say bigger, I'm I'm talking about the likes of of uh, of Amazon and Google, for example, uh, and Facebook. So these kinds of platforms may have to be treated differently, and the kinds of uh, the kind of reach that they have uh, is. Uh, it's really something else to, to study, Mr. Chair. So if we will be given the opportunity, of course, uh, we'd like to retail uh, market studies, uh, but that has not included the online retail platforms yet, Mr. Chair. Senator Sherwin, are you okay with, uh, happy with the, or satisfied with the answer? Although sometimes... <laughs> Yeah, uh, thirty three. It was uh, you came in, you came in very, very uh, choppy. Uh, I just got uh, a little bit of your uh, of, of your pure ideas. But bottom line is, uh, Mr. Chair, is uh, we want to request PCC to conduct yes. a further study on the industry itself in relation to this law. Um, listening to the resource persons earlier. Uh, we might have you know, unintended consequences on innovation and competition. And that's the angle that I want uh, to hear from uh, PCC. Okay. I, I, I think uh, Attorney Faye got the request. So, Attorney Faye, just uh, please comply uh, as much as, as you can. So, we will try our best to end by 3 p.m. or 3.30 at the latest. And then... Uh, uh, a, a lot of groups uh, still want to make a presentation, so I'll make an, a request again. Try your best to keep it under five minutes. Uh, try your best, Lang. Just try your best. So we'll have Google, Lazada, National Association of Consumers, then Citizen Watch, and then ANCAS. Then we can go go to the government uh, agencies present. Okay. So let's go. Let's hear from Google first, uh, Attorney Gonzalez. Mr. Chairman, good afternoon. I'm Eves Gonzalez, Government Affairs and Public Policy for Google, and we would like to thank the committee for inviting us to this hearing on the proposed Internet Transactions Bill, Senate Bill 1591. At the onset, we would like to manifest our support for the objectives of the bill to promote the growth of e-commerce in the country, to create an e-commerce environment built on trust, and to increase the number of e-commerce participants resulting in sustainable growth of the digital industry in the Philippines. Towards this end, we have been working closely with Philippine authorities such as the DTI, the Department of Tourism, DICT, the Department of Education, and the Department of Health, among others, on projects and programs that promote the digitization and digitalization of key industries such as MSMEs, tourism, government, education, and of course, health. While we join the Senate and the DTI in the objectives of this bill, we worry that some of the provisions of the bill would inadvertently undermine these objectives. We welcome this opportunity to raise these concerns to the committee as we have done so through direct engagement with our industry stakeholders such as the USABC, the DTI, and the Senate. We join our colleagues in the USABC in our concern regarding the mandatory registration requirements found in Section 9 of the bill and the heavy burdens imposed upon online platforms by Section 17 mandating joint and solidary liability. Section 9 in particular creates what is known as non-tariff market access barriers, increases the likelihood of double taxation that may run counter to treaty obligations of the government of the Philippines and could ultimately reduce the vibrancy and competitiveness of the Philippines' digital economy. We hope that through these discussions, with the help of experts in the field of trade, finance, IT law, and e-commerce, we can work together towards a bill that achieves our shared objectives through the collaboration of industry, government, and civil society. Thank you. For that uh, presentation, so we go to Lazada. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is Ray Ali Murung, CEO of Lazada. Yes, sir. I, I just need to project. Uh, this is going to go fast, though. This line. Okay, I hope you can see the screen. Uh, Ms. Mr. Uh, Honorable Chair Pimentel, uh, Bill authors, Senators Kachalian and Marcos, and uh, Senator Caetano, thank you for this opportunity to get this for Lazada to share our, our insights. Um, 
Uh, also to the government agencies and fellow resource speakers. And for this uh, session, we are going to focus, Lazada will focus only on platform responsibility and the solidarity liability issue that was raised earlier. But I want to reiterate, we support the objectives uh, to, of the bill authors to protect consumers and sellers and grow e-commerce. Um, I just want to reiterate that Lazada since 2012 has invested heavily to build consumer and seller trust through logistics and payment solutions, a help desk, a policy framework prioritizing and protecting consumer rights, a IPP portal that brands can sign up to, and robust AI or artificial intelligence to detect, take down, and blacklist violating sellers and buyers. All of this is in place. We've been improving it since 2012. Um, just to show you all the features that e-commerce platforms have that protect customers and sellers, May I call your attention to this first column, where all of these seller quality, product quality, seller product transparency, payment solution, logistics solution, and a return and refund process is already present in organized e-commerce platforms. Now, where it is not familiar to us for classified platforms and social media platforms, we just put a question mark. Uh, and also, uh, I, I respect the opinion of Facebook earlier, whether a one size fits all would apply to all types of platforms. We also include here brick and mortar platforms, meaning malls and changes. We feel that uh, some of the things that are being done in e-commerce are also are not being done offline. So we want to show that e-commerce platforms have behaved very responsibly in protecting customers and sellers. Uh, narrowing down to what I call seller and take down seller and product takedown. We have a funnel and we are very vigilant in taking down products and sellers to protect customers. For example, we use artificial intelligence to prevent sellers from uploading prohibited products. We use AI to prevent a, register, a past offending seller from onboarding again. We use AI to detect whether the image is a prohibited product. We have uploaded reported regulatory products and we block them. We don't allow customers to search for blacklisted terms. Uh, and then we cancel any order for, by an offending seller or product upstream. Okay? We take down prohibited counterfeit IP infringing products and their sellers. So we have an approach for products and we have an approach for sellers. Okay, so this is a more specific portion on, the, on what we're doing to protect customers and sellers want to show this year that Lazada has taken down 17,000 sellers and 17 million products in 2020 alone. And when customers raise complaints to the DTI, 99.5% of the time they are resolved. There are just a few open cases. Uh, and this is also thanks to the very uh, strong support of the DTI. So we are resolving customer concerns. And I think the more important thing is that there are very, very few concerns. 0.001% of our buyers even escalate to the DTI. And when they do, we solve it close to 100% of the time. I want to end by saying, by proposing this framework for seller and product regulatory violations. I know the Honorable Senator uh, Gatchoyan uh, and the OMB last session pointed out the products visible on the platform that are potentially in violation with regulations. And I think, uh, and we would like to propose this framework. Number one, do we believe that, that, do we believe that platforms currently have sellers that offer products with regulatory violations? We fully agree. Should platforms take this down, these sellers and their products? We fully agree. Do platforms have a responsibility to regulate sellers that use their services? We agree. Should platforms refund customers impacted by these sellers? We agree. Should sellers be held liable for their regulatory violations? We agree because they are the violators. I think the last part is the real question. Should platforms be held solidarily liable for these seller violations? Rather than answering that, I would like to ask a question. Do we really believe that this solidarity liability will solve number one? removing all the sellers with violations, right? Do we believe um, that platforms can be held responsible without solidarity liability? At Lazada, we strongly believe that the foregoing has shown that the answer is yes. 
and Lazada is happy to continue to discuss this and take questions and continue to be a resource for this legislation. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Mr. Ali Mr. Morong. Uh, I have some questions because I'm, I'm, I'm a Lazada user, so can, I, can we use Lazada as the uh, example? I hope yeah, you don't mind. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, you have this uh, last mall, right? uh, mm -hmm. uh, where you guarantee that all of the uh, items sold in your mall, that you consider that your, your mall, uh, are authentic and genuine. Is that correct, sir? That is correct. In fact, it is under right here under verified product seller badge, part of transparency. It's similar to uh, the PCC's, uh, uh, no, sorry, uh, the earlier comment by Ms. Santos on a trusted uh, badge or mark on sellers. Yes, so, so that's the last mall. That is your mall, but not necessarily that, that you manufacture the products. Is that correct, uh, sir? That is correct. Yes. Oh, okay. all, all the products there are, uh, we have certified that the seller is yes. the authorized distributor or seller or retailer. Oh, yes. And then, and then, and then you have some sellers not falling under last mall. So, and, and, uh, the, 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 I get the impression that the diligence standard, uh, for the sellers in the non last mall, the non last mall sellers, are of lower standard than the last mall sellers so why why do we have this because you have already proven that you can observe high standards for your vendors in the last mall so why not apply the same standard to all your sellers in lazada is, is that not possible uh, your honor thank, thank you for that question actually uh, i believe a few of the resource speakers brought up that topic earlier and the reason for it is because there are consumers who actually want to buy from a different type of seller. Uh, for instance, when customers go to Green Hills and buy in the Changge, they are doing this on purpose, right? So the point we are making is that rather than anticipate what every customer wants, what we are saying is let's make it all available, but let us make it transparent so that the customer knows what he is buying. Right. So the message we're saying, customer, if you are a certain type of customer, the type who likes to go to, let's say, Glorietta 5 or Greenbelt, Glorietta 4 or Greenbelt 5, then you should go over here. Right. That is the kind of message we, we are saying. We are allowing all types of sellers to thrive and giving options to customers by being transparent. Oh, well, well my, my point is of uh, authenticity, genuineness, and yet, and you do this... Uh, in a tech efficient way i suppose then how come how come we we are not applying it to all the sellers on your platform uh, that's my point because alam you you already know you already know the the technology you already know the system how come you still differentiated because my concern sir is uh, a seller from another country who's who's the loss on how to incorporate we do not know and we are not expected to know okay so mm -hmm. the seller be, this 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 corporate entity becomes blacklisted uh, and but then we don't we do not know how easy it is in his country of origin to form another corporation then list again in Asada, then victimize uh other consumers so but if you if you subject them to the same standard as last mall baka hindi papasa oh so that's my question sir you have already invented or discovered the way to do it how come you did not apply it to all yeah, thank, thank you for that clarification, Your Honor. If I may, I think there are two parts to the question. The first one is why don't we apply it to all and that it is potentially a technical solution. Actually, it is not a technical solution. It's actually very manual. Uh, in fact, and, uh, and the, the standard being used in last mall is very different. Uh, it is the, the seller must prove that he is the designated brand seller or distributor in the country. Many sellers are also selling authentic products, but they are not the authorized distributor in the country, right? Uh, that is why we don't want to necessarily close that. By the way, even within uh, sellers selling authorized products, a brand may designate only one of them to be the flagship store on Lazada. So we still allow the others to sign up, but not on last mall. Um, regarding sellers coming back, actually, we have a very robust AI to prevent that from happening. 
we blacklist sellers from resigning up, not on the seller name, but on a number of attributes like IP address, uh, device ID. We're using uh, aggregation, uh, an algorithm that analyzes if they are the same seller. Of course, we recognize that some get through, but we are able to catch them also under other steps. So uh, that I hope that uh, re answers uh, your question. Uh, at least you're 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 you're, on top again, you're piercing the corporate veil that they cannot hide under names, but it's the same uh, individuals involved. Now. So, exactly. but I will I, I will confirm that Lazada is very uh, generous and lenient in its uh, reimbursement policy. If you have a if you have, if there's a complaint, I think you immediately settle it, no? Okay. Kahit na logi kayo. <laughs> well, well, Your Honor, what we do, Your Honor, to your point, that what we do is we make sure first that the customer is made whole. Whether we can claw that back from the offending seller, we say we just we, we feel that is our problem. Yes, correct. Because but, this is how we maintain trust. But but this one is just food for thought, no? Uh, ito, this is my personal opinion. Uh, but no substandard or no fake product should actually be circulating in the marketplace. So even if you refund, reimburse the consumer and there is no loss from the point of view of the consumer, I still do not agree if, we, if the system allows the circulation of the substandard or fake products. So that is what we should address in the first place. Do not introduce these products into the marketplace. Kahit na masauli siya o ma-reimburse si consumer, we should, uh, we should not be happy that the consumer did not feel any damage. But there, there, because there's, there's actually damage, uh, number one, the time, the effort, the delivery expenses, dalawa po yun, uh, nakuha at binalik. So I hope I hope you will uh, we will also look at the situation that way, sir. Not only Lazada but all of the online shopping platforms. Now, try our best not to allow the introduction into the Philippine marketplace of fake and substandard products. Kait na may policy na isa only and reimbursed. Yes, Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, we fully support that position. Uh, in fact, that's why we have an IPP portal for brands to sign up and report. However, we do recognize that it still occurs. Uh, and I think the main challenge is because it is very difficult using technology alone to capture which is fake. Uh, we use already, we detect images, no? like the swoosh of Nike, we can detect that image. But it is very hard to just use the technology to determine that is fake. Right. Um, so, that, so I think uh, we are continuing to do it and we are using multiple robust methods, but uh, I recognize that uh, it, uh, it's a work, it's a job that continues to, we need to continue to improve on. But, but, but we could see the effort. So please, uh, Lazada and the other online shopping platforms, please, please participate also in the technical working group as we finalize uh, this bill. Okay. We will do that, Your Honor. Okay, so thank you. Uh, any any other questions for Lazada from the senators? Because I can now will now proceed to recognize the National Association of Consumers to be followed by Citizen Watch and then by ANCAS. So, is the National Association of Consumers ready? Sino po ito? Uh, Mr. Pipito. Yes, uh, thanks you, very much. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Um, my family name is Pepito. My first name is Jose. I represent the Nationwide Association of Consumers. Uh, I would like to say good afternoon also, Mr. Mr. Chair, to the senators present. Uh, I think Mr. Uh, Senator Marcos is still there. Senator Gachalian, good afternoon, and the rest of the the resource persons here present. Oh, I see Miss, I see Yusik, uh, Yusik uh, Ruth Castello, good afternoon. Now, yes, Mr. Chair, we have we have a particular concern. I think uh, everybody realized that with the impact of coronavirus, there are a lot of upcoming businessmen and businesswomen composed of those who lost their job because of the impact of of corona covid-19 now with the with the proposal with these proposed bills 
necessarily this also uh, contains regulations. Pag, uh, pag-usapan kasi yung regulations, this may discourage our up-and-coming businessmen and women, notwithstanding the cost involved in, in uh, complying with the regulations, but uh, considering the number of government regulators there are, masyadong nakakatakot eh. So I, I think uh, this will, this may uh, discourage our upcoming businessmen. And uh, therefore, uh, instead of encouraging them to grow, we might, uh, they might just get out of the market. And so, uh, sayang then, sayang. And uh, we have a, we have crafted a proposal uh, to, be, uh, to mitigate these concerns. However, I cannot discuss this here because I am not familiar very much with this because this was crafted by our member. And we will just submit uh, the our position paper to the Senate uh, Secretariat later on. Actually, we have submitted this, the same paper to Congress also when they started the, uh, discussing the, the similar bills that, that the, is now being discussed in the Senate. So uh, uh, until until we are able to, if if anyway, if if the Senate will find it or the chair especially will find it necessary to to let our proponent discuss our prop- proposal, we would gladly uh, ask her to see you and, and make. Uh, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, I could not let I could not get her to attend this hearing. I I, I hope next hearing I can I I can convince her to to be present, so she can expound on our proposal regarding the up and coming businessmen and women. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Mr. Senator. But, but uh, please submit a position paper, sir, if you are inclined to do so. Yes, we we will submit. Thank you, sir. Thank you, we'll sir. submit later on. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, at the soonest possible time, sana pa. Okay, citizen, watch your next. Mr. Oxales? Orly? Yes, Orly, go ahead. Yes, yeah, thank you. Because uh, consumer advocacy group. Uh, we believe that this law is really commendable as uh, it really will have a very strategic effect, especially on protecting consumer consumers. Um, e-commerce, especially in the context of COVID-19, has really become uh, practically a lifesaver for all, all of us. Uh, we recognize this, and uh, we know already for a fact that uh, many have shifted to this mode of transaction because uh, although it has been there for many years, uh, this situation actually forced many users and many small entrepreneurs, and as mentioned by uh, the resource person before me, many have resorted to this uh, mode of business to be able just to make ends meet because of the difficult times. Uh, our position, Your Honor, is that uh, we believe that uh, consumer protection is important, uh, and uh, we are really uh, uh, happy to hear that uh, the well-established e-commerce platforms are doing all of these innovation in terms of technology and methods in protecting the consumers from the sellers. However, we see uh, from a consumer point of view, and even personally, is that the big risk for consumers is really the transactions that are ca- coming from transaction directly from the sellers. And uh, really, it, it, the way we look at it is, uh, if you're a consumer entering, entering an, what I call would be an ultra-free market, there are inherent risks. Uh, there are opportunities there for everyone and like any free market, there are inherent risks. And behavior has a lot, of, a lot to do with it. Um, 
I feel that it will be very important to take a look at the best practices and to closely collaborate with, with uh, all of these uh, platforms on what the best balance would be between regulation and actually promoting the expansion of this mode of transaction. And we will be very happy to participate in the uh, next TWG sessions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Oxales. And uh, next would be Angkas and then uh, IPO Philippines. Huh? You're next, sir. Uh, Angkas, please. Hi, um, magandang umaga po. Uh, magandang hapon po. Um, magandang hapon po, Chairman uh, Senator Pimentel. Magandang hapon din po sa authors po ng bills, um, Senator uh, Marcos and Senator Gachalian, Senator Cayetano. Um, good afternoon. Thank you po sa pagkakataon na pagsulitayin po kami tungkol dito. Um, ang angkas po has been really focused on consumer protection um, as a platform. No? And we really commend po yung bill na to. Kasi po naka-focus po tayo dun sa paano protectionan yung consumer. And we just really hope that um, we're able to also strike a balance wherein ano po yung madidefine po natin na responsibilidad po ng platform, a responsibilidad po ng mga regulators um, pag to ensure that the platform um, really focuses on making sure that the transactions are reliable, um, the transactions are good, and the consumers protected. And also for the consumers to have a direct um, ability po, no, to, with, 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 in reference to the Bureau to be able to uh, uh, complain or um, you know, mitigate um, some of the issues that they have. Um, being, in, you know, being in a very heavily regulated industry um, in transportation, um, our product is actually the safety of the consumer. And that's what we push. Um, and we hope to participate, although we do not have uh, products that we sell in our in our platform. Um, I think the principle remains the same, um, Mr. Chairman. So, marami pong salamat. And we can provide po our own position paper in terms of what we are already doing and on how our platform um, is responsible for our customers. And we hope that we can apply the same principle um, in a more, you know, in in the expanded universe of the internet, no, and e-commerce, um, um, for this uh, purpose. Maraming salamat, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Please submit at the soonest possible time. Ride hailing services is uh, under the scope and coverage. Pala your paragraph uh, D of Section Four. Okay. So thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you for that. Thank okay. You, so, IPO Philippines, uh, they have been with us since the start. Uh, who will make the presentation, please? IPO, Philippines. You're on mute, ma'am. Please unmute. Ah, okay, tayo. Good afternoon, Senator. Uh, this is uh, Deputy Director General Ted Pasqua from IPOFIL. Uh, we have a statement to make for in behalf of our Director General regarding uh, uh, the bill. Uh, Mr. Senator, if you may. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, Ted. Go ahead. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, several studies this year address global trade in counterfeit and pirated goods. The Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, or OECD, based on 2016 data, just issued a report on the latest trends in trade uh, in counterfeit and pirated goods. It showed that trade in counterfeit and pirated physical goods has risen steadily in the last few years and now stands at 3.3% of global trade, which is estimated to be at U.S. $509 billion. These are some industries significantly af uh, affected than others. 22% for footwear, 15% for clothing, 13% for leatherwear, 12% for electrical equipment. The OECD report identified the key factors behind this growth. Uh, some of them are corruption, poor IP enforcement, 
free trade zones, China's role as a top producer of counterfeit and pirated goods, and the use of post or courier services to send small shipments. The Better Business Bureau of the United States issued a report finding that, I quote, organized criminals operating out of China are behind the vast majority of this fraud, unquote, and that they are, quote, supported by a large ecosystem of groups that arrange for credit card processing, unquote. It is recommended that the credit card payment processors increase their efforts to combat sellers of counterfeit goods. A studies of ghost data of counterfeit goods sold on Instagram found that top payment system is by far WeChat Pay, which is owned by a Chinese company. Earlier this year, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security reported or report that noted uh, uh, and noted that although e-commerce has supported thousands of legitimate businesses, e-commerce platforms, third-party marketplaces, and other support supporting intermediaries have also served as platforms for the trafficking of counterfeit and pirated goods. This is because selling counterfeit and pirated goods through e-commerce platforms and related online third-party marketplaces is a high-profit venture with low cost of production, big market online, convenient transactions, and the cover of well-known platforms for legitimacy. Sellers of illicit goods are in another country, uh, are in another country, are exposed to relevant, relatively minimal risk of criminal prosecution or liability. Hence, e-commerce platforms need to take additional actions to combat trafficking in counterfeit and pirated goods and reduce, if not eliminate, the availability of such goods on their platforms. The committee can take a look at the DHS, quote, combating trafficking in the counterfeit and pirated goods, unquote, report, which called for the swift adoption by e-commerce platform that platforms that operate third-party marketplaces and other third-party intermediaries on the following top 10 priority best practices. Number one, comprehensive terms of service agreements. Two, significantly enhancing vetting of third-party sellers, like the chair has just mentioned. Three, limitations on high-risk products like medicines. Four, efficient notice and takedown procedures. Five, enhance post-discovery actions. Six, indemnity requirements for foreign sellers. Seven, clear transactions through banks that comply with enforcement requests. Eight, pre-sale pre identification of third-party sellers. Nine, establish marketplace seller IDs. And ten, clearly identifiable country of origin disclosures. There is a growing concern about the proliferation of counterfeits in social media platforms such as Facebook and WeChat. Pursuant to IPOFIL's mandate to administer and implement state policies on intellectual property to strengthen the protection of IP rights in the country, the IPOFIL endorses uh, Senate Bill 1591 and the creation of an e-commerce bureau under the Department of Trade and Industry. It cannot be emphasized that intellectual property protection is critical to fostering innovation, research, and development so that businesses and individuals can enjoy the full benefits of their inventions. And for the artists to be fully compensated for their creations and so cultural vitality will prosper. IPOFIL already submitted a position paper, Your Honor, and we will be submitting a supplemental uh, position on this. We also commit to actively participate in the technical working group meetings to discuss the details of the bill. Before I end, Mr. Chair, I just would like to uh, raise as a addendum or a uh, rejoinder to the Chair's comment on Lazada's uh, last mall. The problem when uh, the representative said that it all depends on the consumer what he wants, whether he wants counterfeit goods or genuine goods, is, I think, something that should be looked at very carefully. If counterfeit goods, especially medicines, especially cos cosmetics, 
and other counterfeit consumer goods will be allowed. The only thing that the Filipino consumer usually considers is price. Safety is down the line on his priorities. The moment it becomes attractive to the person, there is a principle in law, uh, like the uh, uh, in civil law, which is like uh, runs like it's a uh, it escapes me right now, Mr. <laughs> Senator. It's an attractive new essence. You are attracted by it because of the price, but it will carry you down to hades because of the dangers that it presents. Secondly, counterfeit goods do not pay taxes. They don't pay the appropriate taxes that are required. Thirdly, manufacturers of genuine goods comply with environmental laws. Counterfeit purveyors do not comply with environmental laws. There are a lot more things, Mr. Chair, that counterfeit purveyors or counterfeit manufacturers do not do, but do more harm to the consumer than to our general public. So thank you very much, Mr. Chair, for this uh, opportunity. We will, we will submit a supplemental comment your honor to our position. We take also cognizance of the comments of Senator Pia Cayetano that uh, solidary liability is not the only way to punish uh, or to uh, discipline uh, 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 platforms. We, we take cognizance of that, your honor, and we will address that also. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let me just acknowledge the presence of uh, Police Colonel Nicolas Torre. Okay, the senators want to ask questions. Okay. Uh, ladies first, Olet, Sherwin, uh, Attorney, uh, Senator Pia, then Senator Sherwin. Uh, Mr. President, I'd just like to get clarification on what was just said. No, um, kasi I, I, had to, I had to tune out for a few minutes. Did I hear correctly that um, the last speaker referred to a statement, I don't know if it was by Lazada, that uh, counterfeit uh, pe uh, buyers have an option to buy counterfeit or non-counterfeit. Because the statement I recall from Lazada in the first hearing uh, or position paper was that they honor our counterfeit laws. In fact, those are laws of the land. No, uh, I have never heard any, um, any uh uh, platform, whether it's a mall or a online platform, say something like that. So I think that's a very uh, um, careless statement to make if that is true that it came from them. So may I be clarified if such a statement came from them? Kasi hindi na dapat pinag-uusapan yun, ha? Uh, batas na natin yan. And I agree naman, talagang magkato yan when it comes to medicine and foods. Um, even skincare products. So actually, let's not even talk about it because it's not I don't. I don't recall Lazada admitting to selling uh, fake goods. Uh, so where did you get that idea, uh, Director General? Ed, uh, Mr. Chair, I was reacting only on the statement I heard from the representative of Lazada when you were asking him why they are uh, imposing strict uh, measures on the uh, last mall, right. it is not the same measures that they impose on the general um, uh, consumer goods that are being sold. Why not just have one standard? And the comment was, sir, there are also people who go to Green Hills. There are also people who go, and he, I think he even said that, that on the con what the if consumer may. wants. May. It is yeah. If, then let it be so. If, whether it is uh, uh, counterfeit or not is no longer a concern. It is the uh, free uh, market that uh, they would like to open. And uh, just an addition, Your Honor. Okay. Touch with Lazada and Facebook, and we are constantly learning from each other. And I think uh, it should also be admitted that Lazada and Facebook and other platforms in their efforts to protect. Uh, uh, no, uh, Director General Pasqua, your last your last phrase was uh, was omitted. You know? What did you say? In their efforts to? Uh, they are also increasing their efforts to protect intellectual property. Thank you, sir. Uh, we will give Lazada a chance to clarify. 
Sir, uh, compose your idea well para klaro, uh, Mr. Alimorong. Just a reaction to what was stated. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, yeah, to the comment of Director General Pasqua, uh, I think I made it very clear on the earlier slides that Lazada is very serious about customer trust, and we have a lot of mechanisms to protect intellectual property. Uh, I believe uh, my statement may have been misconstrued because I was simply replying to a question by uh, the Honorable Chairman as to why not the exact same criteria is applied outside Last Mall. And to be very clear, the criteria for Last Mall is that the seller is the authorized and designated store by the brand. So even if there are 20 stores that are set, that are buying legitimately from the brand, but only one is designated as the flagship store, that is the store on Last Mall. Okay, okay thanks, sir. Uh, Centropia, if you have more questions. Yeah, so if I may, in layman's term, there's a difference between if you are the exclusive distributor, then you can be on Last Mall, or if you are one of the many distributors that are allowed either directly or indirectly, then you would not be in Last Mall, something like that, as opposed to saying that you are actually patronizing or allowing counterfeit goods on, on the other, on the non Last Mall or the regular uh, Lazada platform. Is that an accurate uh, summary, Mr. Mr. Chairman? Uh, Mr. Ray? Lazada, please. Yes, yes, that is correct. Okay, I'm satisfied. Thank you. So Lazada will never knowingly allow the trade in fake goods in your platform. Th that is correct. And once it's brought to our attention, uh, we aside from the mechanisms we have to detect and take this down, once it is made known to us, we take it down immediately. And we also prevent a seller known to be doing this from re-onboarding on our platform. That's correct, but but uh, cu but currently you cannot guarantee one hundred percent that there is no uh, fake item in the Lazada online platform. But you're you're you're, you're exerting best efforts to prevent that. Yan, yan, claro po yan, claro po yan. That is that is accurate, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay, so Senator Sherwin. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, would like to uh, just commend Lazada because um, the products that uh, we pointed out last time, the, uh, the pirated products, some of the FDA, FDA non-FDA accredited products were already taken down uh, since the last uh, hearing on September 3. So uh, my action, man, uh, Mr. Chair, is just, I think, but uh, uh, Dr. Ali Murong. And uh, we, we just did a cursory, uh, uh, scan of the products, meron pa rin mga, uh, mga uh, pirated and uh, non-accredited FDA products. But in fairness, yung mga na-pointed out last time, matanggal rin. So there's action. But I guess because of the sheer volume, and this is where the challenge here, because anyone can sell. No? And uh, this is where the problem lies, because anyone can sell and anyone can buy. No, and uh, that's where the challenge comes in. And, uh, I do appreciate Lazada's strict mechanism to monitor. Uh, I don't have the answer how to monitor everything, but uh, definitely um, we have to find a solution to make sure that our consumers will not buy those counterfeit or even non-FDA accredited items. But Mr. Chair, my question is to the IPO um, representative, the Pretty Director Pasqua. Uh, that, uh, Deputy Director, uh, looking at the law, uh, you, you made mention earlier of some of the provisions of the law, but you, looking at the law, uh, do we have enough safeguards uh, to prevent, um, in the law, uh, do we have enough safeguards to prevent counterfeit items to uh, come in the market or come into the Philippine market? Um, do you have any more suggestions on what type of mechanisms we need to employ uh, in the law so that um, this type of counterfeit items will not come in or at least minimize the uh, exposure of these items to our market? Thank you very much, uh, Chairman, uh, I mean, uh, Senator uh, Gatchelian. Uh, as far as the law is concerned, 
I think we have already a good framework for protecting consumers against counterfeit and uh, pirated goods. The problem at times is the issue on personnel and funding of government agencies that are required to uphold and uh, impose the issue of uh, proliferation of counterfeit and uh, pirated goods. May I just uh, have a quick uh, reference to the National Committee on Intellectual Property Rights. This is a 12-agency uh, 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 committee composed of uh, the Bureau of Customs, PNP, NBI, all 12 national agencies with mandates on protecting intellectual property. The executive order that created this in 2008 specifically stated that all agencies must have their own dedicated personnel. It must be a dedicated personnel or division or uh, uh, a bureau that will protect intellectual property rights. Number two, it also says that they have to provide funding for these offices. But unfortunately, uh, only a few of the 12 agencies are able to comply with that requirement. Even if uh, when we were meeting, even if we want to emphasize that, they always keep on saying all their budgets to support that are submitted to DBM. But when it comes back, that budget is cut off. So that uh, that's one thing, Your Honor, that prevents what is ideal, what the law provides, from what the law can be implemented. The lack of dedicated personnel and the lack of funding to, su to, propose, to support the dedicated personnel to do their jobs for it. Mr. Director, in so far as this law is concerned, um, this, bill, sorry, this bill is concerned. Sorry, this bill, this proposal. This bill, yes, Your Honor, the bill is uh, has uh, submitted a lot of good developments. We're uh, reviewing it once again, uh, Mr. Uh, Senator, because we we do also believe that there has to be a policy dedicated office, and the Bureau of E-Commerce can be a policy dedicated office that can really cut out the work plan or the roadmap for the development of e-commerce in our country. And then perhaps we'll be studying it, but we were thinking because also of the comments that were given earlier, instead of uh, having more powers in only one office, which uh, cross cuts, other agency, perhaps the law can provide, like for example, the provision on takedown and blocking. It can perhaps provide that authority to all current agencies that have jurisdiction over uh, the subject matter. For example, FDA who has jurisdiction over food and drugs can be given that power in the current bill. I feel with respect to intellectual property, uh, DTI with respect to consumer rights can be given by just one provision that says these following agencies can have takedown powers in respect to their individual authorities. Senator Sherwin. Okay. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Deputy Director. Thank you, Bob. Thank you very much, sir. Deputy Director, you mentioned uh, uh, putting some obligation on the credit card providers no? to also do their share and help fight uh, counterfeit the trade in counterfeit goods. That's a very good idea. So please submit your position paper and supplemental at the soonest possible time, sir. Kayo lang nagsabi nito. As far as I can recall, kayo lang po nag input nito. Yes, Your Honor, we will comply, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Ali Morong, uh, if you can visit our chat room, may mga, re may mga reklamo po doon. And then uh, we, just, we just can hope for a quick action, just as mentioned by uh, Senator Sherwin. Because the last time, sino ba si, I think, At Attorney Adriano no? uh, presented. Ano? So I think you acted on the, on the, on the evidence of the trade in uh, counterfeit goods in Lazada online platform so please ito po and then someone texted me sent me a picture so talagang it's either 
our topic is very popular or your online platform is very popular Yes. Meron po, po mga Nike Air Zoom Winflow 6 at 399. The point of the the point of the texture is that from the price alone, uh, it's already an indication that it it, it must be fake. Uh, yes, actually, Your Honor, uh, if I may, since the last time we definitely took uh, some of the inputs of the OMB and Senator Gachalian. That's why a lot of it has been removed. Uh, they what we found is that they have found clever new ways to you know go around our uh, regulations no uh, and yes the challenge is uh, on uh, fashion and products like this because uh, i understand the point of the texture regarding price but there is a price point per model so it's actually not that simple we, we it's easier for example to do on televisions where there are fewer models uh, but definitely, uh, this is uh, on our radar, for sure. In fact, may I make a suggestion for uh, FDA advisory products? We actually have reached out to the FDA. I believe we have a meeting coming up. We would like to propose an easy-to-download negative list. Today, we go through all of the memos one by one every week to try to find lists of new advisory products, and then we load it into our system to remove them. But if there was an easy way to get a regularly updated, easily downloadable negative list, uh, this would uh, go a long way in our efforts on FDA products. Thank you, sir. And anyway, the commitment of Lazada to fight uh, trade in counterfeit items, items is on record. So uh, just keep uh, improving on what you're doing, uh, sir. Uh, siguro and then just show, show us proof that uh, you know it that, that these new items brought to our attention today have been acted upon exactly yes, sir. Uh, yes. Senator, Senator marcos is raising her hand yes I, I i would just like to say that uh, notice and takedown is found in my bill i just added a provision particularly for that to force the platforms and the consumers to work hand in hand uh, because this is a common provision in international IP laws. So if we can add this in the bill, uh, Mr. Chair, this was one of the amendments I mentioned earlier. Notice yes. and take down is for the protection of the platforms. If they're notified, they take it down immediately. They will not be held liable for the illegal items. So let's put it explicitly na in the law, like uh, many of our uh, international jurisdictions thank you paul okay so parang you 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 can you can take the ini or you must take the initiative muna before before the another the full force of the law will be applied on you parang ganon ganon ba yung madam uh, parang ganon my notice my notice and take down kasi syempre sa libo-libo nilang produkto uh, at least pag may consumer notice edi dapat i-take down wala na silang excuse Okay, thank you. Oh, kaya, kaya nyo pa? Shall we proceed? Oh, pagod na kayo. <laughs> yeah, I, I want, because some government agencies are present, so let's take advantage of their presence. Siguro another appeal to keep the presentation three to five minutes and then yung, the, the, the written position papers can be unleashed. Okay, so we can hear from, uh, in this order na lang, uh, the ICT, uh, BIR, CDA, SEC, NPC, and PNP, if you, if you have something to present. So the ICT, uh, do you want to say anything, to share anything? Jose Carlos Reyes of the ICT. Okay, so again, we, we, can, we can go back. Uh, uh, BIR, uh, Mr. Larry Barcelo. Uh, who is, who is representing BIR? Good afternoon, Your Honor. Oh, who, who is this? DICT or BIR? BIR. Okay, yes, sir. Go yeah, ahead. Uh, during the last uh, hearing, Your Honor, uh, the BIR already provided its uh, comment position on the uh, pending bills. Uh, the BIR supports the bill as much as the, this bill requires uh, registration of those engaged in online transactions. As what the BIR is doing now, uh, we are reminding the online business with BIR. Yes, I remember. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for your representation and thank you for being present also this afternoon. Oh, so, uh, the ICT, 
Mr. Reyes? Ah, okay. Okay, it is. Okay, if not yet ready, uh, CDA. CDA? Whose mic, whose mic is on? <laughs> please. please uh, okay. I think Laban Consumers' mic is on, so please uh, put it to, to mute. Uh, CDA, SEC? Uh, who's ready? NPC? Not only ready, but who wants to also present, make a presentation? PNP, sir? If you want to make a presentation, Colonel? Nakamit, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Your Honor, sir, good afternoon. Um, for the PNP side, my experience now, sa nakikita namin sa statistics natin, um, hindi namin gaano problema yung mga established platforms like Lazada, like... Uh, Iba online online platforms hindi ka anong problema ng PNP sa ngayon yan. ang isang malaking concern talaga namin sa ngayon yung open platforms like marketplace where the Facebook marketplace especially and most significantly where anyone can just uh, can just uh, upload and uh, offer to sell things at, at the end of the day uh, marami ang complaints na aming natatanggap regarding that matter. So, ang isang pwede sa natin ma-integrate na, yung isasuggest namin at ipapadala namin sa aming position paper, yung <clears throat> number one, yung pagpupush talaga ng SIM card registration so that people cannot hide behind on the anonym, anonymity of uh, the prepaid SIM cards. And second, secondly, yung sa mga online financial transactions like uh, uh, yung uh, Cebuana, yeah, like uh, Western Union and uh, the likes. Yung the, the, the legislation of their the legislation of their uh, <coughs> the legislation compelling them to disclose to the sender yung identity ng receiver, including pictures or yung CCTV no mga kumuha. Kasi yan ang isa sa pinakamahirap namin na na nagpada, sir, nagpadala ako ng liman libo na eh hindi dumating ang item eh na-withdraw na yung pera pag pumunta kami sa online uh, financial institution na nag-transfer uh, ng pera dadaan kami sa butas ng karayom para namin makuha identity nung nag-withdraw which is supposedly eh ako nagpadala eh so dapat it will be easy for me to compel Western Union or Cebuana na ibigay sa akin ang identity na kung sino ang kumuha na pinagbigyan nila ng pera ipinadala ko sa kanila. So, if we can integrate that into the law, sir, uh, that will be a very, very big help to us. And of course, uh, medyo stiffen natin at uh, medyo padaliin ang pag-compel ng mga uh, entities na concerned. Nung pag-disclose ng mga fake accounts, especially fake accounts, uh, hindi ko na alam kung papay, pinag-iisipan pa namin nga sa together with the anti-cybercrime group, kung paano namin itotono ang position paper namin in such a way na it will be easier for us to ask uh, from Facebook kung ano ang nasan ang IP address nung nag-create ng, uh, ng kwa na to, nung, nung fake account na to, etc. etc. Dahil kinoklone nga ang pinakamala, isa sa pinakamalaking uh, portion din ng mga complaints na aming natanggap sa mga scamming is that kinoklone ang picture or or account na isang tunay na tao to give it semblance of uh, legitimacy at pagkatapos yun ang ginagamit sa panunoko. Pag tinraise na ngayon namin yan, ayun, dumadaan kami sa butas ng karayong para malaman ang identity at uh, source ng mga ganong tao. So, for the moment, sir, yan lang, sir, from the discussions that we had uh, na narinig namin dito sa side namin, yan ang aming mai may suggest, may input for the moment. Ilalagay namin yan sa isang position paper na then ipapadala natin sa committee or honor. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Police Colonel Torre. Uh, Yusek, Ruth, you, you raise your hand. Yusek Castello. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, just two things, Mr. Chair. I just want to correct myself earlier when I said that when we talk to the big platforms, 
uh, they immediately respond to us and address the concerns. I'm talking, Mr. Chair, only of the three platforms that we are able to communicate with. We understand that there are more than more than three, but we talk to Lazada, Shopee, and Zalora. And these are the platforms that respond to us whenever we, we send them any concern. But the rest, Mr. Chair, like Alibaba, uh, in the other platforms, we have no communication with them whatsoever, including uh, we talk to Facebook, but it's also very difficult to uh, to request Facebook because they say that they do not have uh, the authority to, to take down the pages despite the complaints. But another thing, Mr. Chair, I just want to say that it was earlier mentioned that um, we should be able to give equal protection to both offline and online stores. And we understand that, and that is what exactly we want to happen also in the Internet Transactions Act. But Mr. Chair, we also heard uh, from one of our resource speakers here that uh, registration is burdensome, registration is restrictive to foreign companies, registration, is, uh, registration with DTI is counterproductive, Mr. Chair, we uh, anyway, this proceeding is recorded. There was one speaker earlier who said this, and we just want to ask Mr. Chair that if we're going to give equal treatment uh, to both online and offline stores, why would registration be restrictive for, for, for online platforms or sellers, whether domestic or foreign? In the Philippines, we register all businesses, uh, all kinds of businesses, in physical stores, especially whether foreign or domestic, whether big or small. So regardless of size, regardless of origin, uh, regardless of citizenship or of whatever, uh, we have them registered. So I don't think we should be any different uh, in online transactions sir, in, in for all on, online merchants. So that is all for now, Mr. Chair. We will raise our, our, our other points in the TWG. And we just like to say, uh, that we fully support this bill, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Well, you said, Ruth, yung ease of use na lang, ease of use of the registration process, di ba? So, para walang reklamo. It, 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 this is just... Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, who, wants to say, who wants to say something? Uh, okay, this is food for thought because uh, you said Castello mentioned uh, Facebook and then Facebook, Facebook Philippines says they cannot take down uh, a page where th th there is what there is a, a, a complaint item being questionable item being sold yes. you know, uh, because my, they yeah my question is should we should we take their word for it or should should we allow them to dictate uh, what they can and cannot do but we should but we should interpret our laws and tell them that you have to do this because and to see pnp colonel haven't uh, hasn't hasn't Facebook taken down some pages, but not based on content, but based on ano, behavior. Therefore, the power or the capacity to take down is there, except that they are choosing uh, the category the, the, where they want to exercise the power. So should you allow them to, to do that, uh, Yusek Ruth? Uh, no, sir, we shouldn't. That's why we need the law that will regulate all online platforms, Mr. Chair. Facebook claims that the marketplace is uh, is uh, only a platform that is provided by them and then the, the sellers go on their own. But uh, Mr. Chair, I also want to say, not only for Facebook, but for all other platforms on the liability, Mr. Chair, we have to understand that all platforms advertise their products, their sellers, whatever they have in their platform so that people will go online, open the platforms and shop. So the platforms cannot say that they have nothing to do with the merchants because the advertisement is there and they provide this. Also with Facebook, Mr. Chair, uh, Facebook advertises its mar marketplace. It's called the marketplace. I don't know what, what yeah. I have not uh, gone through marketplace mr chair but facebook yeah. also advertises that so even if that is corporate policy na let us say you don't go to content and then just look at behavior but eh, if there is something violative in your in your platform online platform eh, the law requires you to act but you more than you are also 
of a party to the violation, hindi po ba? Uh, anyway, food for thought lang po yan. I mean, yes, uh, maybe somebody will will start uh, filing uh, an action uh, uh, pursuant to this, uh, to this idea. So, uh, so uh, one, just one, uh, sorry, Mr. Chair, just one final thought. Uh, Mr. Chair, we understand that uh, in, in online stores also, I have to say that whoever supplied the product, whoever uh, manufactured the product, we hold the supplier as well as the store liable for any any uh, complaint made by a consumer. So uh, it, it is not at all true. I mean, is it is not very accurate to say that in malls or in physical stores, it is not done, Mr. Chair, because it is also done, especially for products under the mandatory scheme or, uh, of certification of the Department of Trade and Industry. Uh, okay, please elaborate on that in your position paper. Yes, Mr. Chair, we'll do that. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Colonel, you want to say something? Because I'll go to the ICT. Mukhang ready na sila. Colonel, you want to say something? Nakamute kayo, sir. Nakamute, sir. Colonel, nakamute ka. Colonel. Yes, sir. Uh, Your Honor, um, gusto kong sundan ang sinabi ni Ms. Ruth Castello kasi uh, hindi raw siya familiar sa marketplace. Would you allow me to show you something sa, about sa marketplace? Kasi <laughs> hindi rin, I, I'm sure, Hindi lahat uh, sa inyo ay gumagamit ng marketplace kasi most pro, most of the time ang marketplace is unang-una second hand ang binebenta diyan. Ang nagbebenta diyan ay tao na may pagpaari. Alam mo, may bisikleta akong luma, gusto kong ibenta, ilalagay ko sa marketplace. At ang mga tao naman na gaya ko na ayoko na mong bumili ng high-end na bisikleta na 100,000 dahil sa marketplace mabibili ko ng 50,000 'yan sa totoo lang. Tatawaran at babaratin ko pa, especially may mga tao na for just uh, ibibenta lang ng ganon. Ang isang concern lang talaga dyan, syempre may mga nakaw dyan. Pero uh, yan ang isa sa mga concern namin. But let me show you if you allow me to share. Inopen ko na sa aking cellphone, uh, sa aking screen. Ang... Sige na sir, kasi na-interrupt na kami. Sige, go, go ahead. Sige sir. Ito sir ang marketplace. This is marketplace. If you, kung nakikita nyo, yan. Nakikita nyo ba sir ang, ang screen ko? Nakikita nyo market, ang screen ko? Marketplace yan. So... Sir, search ako naman ang marketplace. Bisiklet. Sir, sir, sa tele, kasi yung nakikita namin. Ah, hindi nyo nakikita aking... Nag-share ako sa aking screen. Come Go. sec, can you see it? Ako, ako, I don't see it. Come sec. I, I don't see it either. Ah, Colonel, what? We, oh. can, we can see the green view. Stop sharing. Stop sharing ko. Ulit. Ulit. One, uh, one again. Once again. Isi-share ko, share, and then isi-share ko ang... Um, Google Chrome. Nakikita nyo? Nakikita nyo ang marketplace? I can see a great view eh. Uh, Pamsek, what do you see? Nakikita namin. We see our pictures namin ang nakikita ko. Oh. Aha. Uh -huh. Ah, Karnak, can you prepare it muna? Then uh, we will... Sige sir, sige sir. Uh, I'll show you sa later. Can you, uh, can, you, can you contact the com Comsec how to do it for now? And then, yes, sir. The ICT is uh, ready, Attorney Raidan. You want to make a yes, presentation? Mr. Okay, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Not much of a presentation, Mr. Chair. Okay, what are your comments? Go ahead. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Good day to everyone, the esteemed members of the Senate, our colleagues in government, and our partners in the private sector. No. Uh, following from the last meeting, uh, the last hearing, the DICT expresses its support for this current bill. And we would also, so uh, our opinion for the inclusion of the DICT in the uh, technical working group and under section 21 of the implementing agencies. Um, we have also submitted our position paper on this matter and uh, hopefully it is considered. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, uh, it is now. It is in my notes, na the ICT because you regulate the delivery service. Sabi niyo, tama po ba yun? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, so tama. Okay. The payments delivery. Mr. Thank Mr. you, sir. You, that you must be included in the uh, implementing agencies. Okay. Okay. So any other uh, agency who is present this afternoon who wants to share something uh, in inputs? Kung kung wala na, di ko na kayo pipilitin. Oh. 
Okay, so you si Colonel na lang because uh, <laughs> he may made us interested in this marketplace. Eh. Uh, Colonel, what is what is your point, sir? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, 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 Colonel, can you just explain a to us, even without sharing, or what is what you have found in marketplace? Even without sharing the screen, there's a problem with the share screen uh, mechanism. Okay. Sige. Okay, Colonel, explain na lang po. Apo. Well, one more last last uh, try. Ito, sir. Share. Yan. Na, may nakikita ba kayo, sir? Wala, sir. Grid view, eh. Wala. Pictures namin. Pictures po. Pictures nyo. Oh, Apo, no. Kasama ka. Andun ka rin. Uh, oh, Colonel, just tell us na lang what, 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 what uh, is your observation about marketplace? Facebook marketplace? Colonel, nakamute ka. Ayan, sir. So, essentially, sir, isang section siya ng Facebook. Just like Messenger, isang section yan. Facebook na conversation, isang kwan yan. And then the others. So, isa doon is marketplace. Meron ding portion ng mga videos. So, parang ganito rin nakikita niyo, sir, ngayon sa inyong screen na naka-grid view. Iba-ibang mga items ang nandyan. Magsisearch ka, like bisikleta. Lalabas ngayon ng lahat ng bibenta ng bisikleta. Hindi mo kilala kung sino mga yan. So basically, to deal with the marketplace, uh, mag, it's a chat mo siya diretso para lang siyang makipag-usap ka sa kanya. And then most of the time, ang binibenta dyan ay second hand. Marami rin nagbibenta ng brand new dyan, pero uh, mas marami dyan ang second hand. Yung mga pag-aari ko, halimbawa may bisikleta ako, ibibenta ko, ipopost ko na siya sa Facebook and then people will start contacting me and magmi-meet up kami. Or pwede naming ipapadala sa Lalamove, Pwede ipadala sa kung ano, tapos online ang pagbabayad. So, basically sir, ganun yung marketplace. It is an unregulated uh, marketplace. Parang uh, pareho rin yan sir nang sa think about it like Qmart. Yung Qmart, pag-aari ng isang kumpanya. Pero para ka makapasok sa Qmart, maglalagay ka ng stalls mo. Pero unregulated ka dun actually, basically dun sa stalls mo, uh, kung anong ibenta mo dun, uh, wala silang pakialam. In the same manner din na parang uh, almost the same siya sa mga Lazada pero unlike sa Lazada na may vetting process ng mga sellers sa marketplace wala. Parang open lang siya na ikukontak kita, may nag nagbebenta ka ng bisikleta, gusto ko bisikleta mo, mag-change tayo ng numbers, cellphone numbers, magtatawagan na tayo and then mag-uusap na tayo. At may mga nangyayari na pag nag-meet up, hold up na ng seller yung buyer. Or hold up in ng buyer yung seller. May mga ganong klaseng kukukuan, sir. May mga ganong klaseng uh, reports. 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 At pero ang pinaka-common is that nag-deposit na ang buyer, hindi darating yung biglang mawawala na yung si seller. Tapos, ang paghinanap po yung seller, makikita mo, legit ang picture. At the end of the day, ninakaw lang pala ang picture. Makikita namin yung tao na nakalagay sa picture, hindi ako yan, sir. Ba't ko naman gagawin yan? Oh, so, ganun sir ang mga nangyayari. So, uh, those are the things that we really need. Uh, I-reiterate ko lang, number one dyan, ang SIM card registration para people cannot, uh, uh, cannot use the anonym anonymity, cannot take advantage of the anonymity of the prepaid SIM cards for their nefarious transactions. Pagkatapos, yung financial transaction na ginagamit yung mga established na mga money remittance services uh, to compel them and make it easy for us or make it easy for the sender to get the identity of the uh, of the receiver. Actually, to some extent, ginagawa na ng Cebuana na Luwilier yan eh. Na pag ikaw ay nagpadala at nireceive na nung kabilang side, so may magte-text sa'yo si Buana that your receiver had already claimed the money that you sent. So let's take it one step further. On their own, they did that because it's part of a good mar marketing marketing strategy. On this, on, let's let the... Uh, we suggest that uh, we let the law uh, take it further by compelling these money remittance services um, providers 
to give to give to the sender the identity of the receiver especially yung ID na ginamit sa pagclaim ng pera if demanded kasi standard naman sir pag ikaw ay nagreceive sa ng pera sa money remittance service hihingian ka ng ID isisirok sila ang ID ilalagay nila yun sa system so sa mga pulis pag may nag-complaint hirap na hirap ko yung makuha ang information na yun if the law can help us to to retrieve those uh, information easily it will be a very very big help for us in the investigation and eventually in filing of these cases and stopping these nefarious activities of scammers thank, thank you. you thank you colonel uh, honor the, the, uh, take, take recognize the npc and the attorney kalinisan dti do you dti at uh, uh, use Ruth, do you confirm uh increase in complaints uh involving facebook uh, <laughs> Uh, yes, sir. We have we have several complaints uh, on Facebook marketplaces. Sir. Okay, thank you, thank you. So confirm, uh, Colonel. Confirm yung ano mo talaga. din sila not only to the PNP but also to the DTI. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I, it really happens, sir. Uh, Attorney Kalinisan wants to make a very quick comment, and then NPC, uh, Attorney Vida. Uh, Attorney Ka Vida Bukar. Attorney Kalinisan, uh, yes, what is your comment? Yeah, Mr. Chair, um, building on the point of uh, Colonel of the PNP, we have to go ahead of ourselves in our uh, position paper, but the bill actually does make distinctions on, uh, on how the different components of the digital commerce must be treated. So, para uh, siya, shotgun for everyone. So just to have a very, very brief uh, discussion, there are different components to uh, digital commerce. There are direct consumers, e-commerce platform, uh, there's the marketplace, and there are communication platforms. And it is a wedding is treatment for all four different platforms, uh, Mr. Chair. So dapat po, uh, meron po tayong uh, tailor fit uh, treatment for each. You know, Mr. Chair. You will submit okay. our position. Uh, uh, Attorney Kalinisa, make sure to elaborate on that because your signal was choppy. So, elaborate on, uh, on that in your position paper. Medyo choppy kanina. Eh. Choppy. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, we have NPC, you know, this is the uh, Privacy Commission. Aye. 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 Attorney Bokar, please. Hello? Ayan pa. Uh, yan to share the sentiments lang po from the National Privacy Commission kasi um, several... Ayan, okay na po, Mr. Chair. Ayan, sorry. Yan po, kasi um, some of the sentiments raised um, by PNP and I think some of the other uh, members po kanina on data privacy, um, there is a tendency po, if let's say we compel for several, um, let's say, false or, or sham sellers, um there may um may platform may ibang platforms or ibang avenues to raise let's say those concerns um such as sige, sa usec nga po ruth castello with dti so ang concern po namin is that um siguro within the uh, boundaries po of um treating let's say even the consumers as well as the sellers na um where personal information may be uh proposed out the technical working hope to prevent um, some of um, possible data privacy violations from occurring. Kasi nga po, um, some instances wherein you're required to present uh, or, or you're mandated to show um, your identity at the mere parang suspicion pa lang po of um, um, false selling or, or, or sham selling. Um, it may be uh, possible also, it may lead to certain abuses by um, not only authorities or government agencies, but also by um, other private individuals as well. Um, yan lang po, Mr. Chair. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, look, are you raising your hand? Oh. Yes, sir. Ang point lang naman namin, sir, dun sa, your honor, ang point lang namin sa pag-request nung uh, ma-integrated sa batas yung disclosure of identity. Pag mayroon ng complaint, maliwanag na may isang tao na lumapit sa amin na, sir, nagpadala ko ng liman libo para bumili ng isang item na ibayad ko na, na-claim na sa Palawan eh, wala, hindi dumating ang aming item. So, pwede bang mapuntahan ng Palawan 
at uh, makuha ka identity kung sino ang kumuha at saan kinuha na branch, pati ang picture at ID na ipindresent para mafile natin ang complaint at mahabol yung tao. Yun lang naman, it's not about uh, uh, kung sino ang gusto naming malaman na kumuha at padala ng pera ay makukuha. Hindi naman ganun. We have to temper also and we agree with the, the NPC that we also protect the basic rights as, uh, as uh, guaranteed by law. Okay. Thank you. You must also guard against uh, sham complaints also. Oh, obviously, <laughs> yes. Obviously, yes. Pangharas lang, ano? Yes, sir. Pero yung, pero yung, exam, yung example mo, sir, yung padala sa Palawan, that's not an online transaction, ano? That is not online transaction. Online transaction? Online transaction sa Palawan. Yes, sir. Halimbawa, ah, okay. sa ngayon, sir, may, may pakita ko, may ballpen ako dito, ibibenta ko. Sir, gusto mo ito, month lang. Ah, okay. The payment, so, okay. Tama. So, Padala mo sa Palawan, ito ang pangalan, eh hindi dumating ang Mont Blanc, sir. Ating pilot na pen. So, magre-request. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, hindi kaya yes, tayo sa online shopping. <laughs> it, has, it, it has been clarified. It's the settlement. It was the, yes. the, basis, the basis for the payment is an online transaction and then bayad through Palawan. Okay, I get it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Binibiruan kita kasi ako adik na adik sa online shopping eh. <laughs> Okay. Ako rin naman, pero ang sabi ko kay Senator Pia, medyo na uh, discourage ako, na disappoint ako because of the overuse of the of plastic in, in, in wrapping the items. Sabi ko, eh, parang unreasonable use of, uh, usage of... Uh, pero sa pero packaging, sobra na yung packaging. Labis-labis. Uh, but that's another topic. Uh, an an ano kaya yan? Anong committee naman yan? No? So, uh, it's referred to the proper committee. So, okay. So, if there are no objections from the senators that there being no other agency wanting to make a comment, especially the authors, uh, Senators Gatchalian and Marcos, are we ready to subject your bills to a technical working group because uh, the subject matter is the priority of the administration mentioned in the SONA, uh, mentioned in the so specifically mentioned in the SONA by the President. So, okay, so um, the, the debate, the debate over joint and solidarity liability will just continue in the technical working group. Because I think that's the one of the biggest issues, no? all the other issues are uh, in addition to the provisions to improve the bill. But ako, as the chair, I sense an objection to the joint and solidary liability concept. Uh, all the rest, ano na, uh, enhancement of the bill, additional membership, uh, a con uh, fixing the concept, etc. Maybe limiting the scope and coverage. Uh, so, which can all be, which can all be threshed out and uh, solved in the technical working group. But uh, I do not, I do not know about that objection. So let the debate continue in the TWG, and then uh, balik na lang sa committee, sa other committee, if uh, it should prove to be uh, unsolvable or uh, uh, a highly debatable uh, point. So, Senator Pia, are you okay with referring this to TWG, na? No, yes, of course. Objection, I'm okay. the authors. I'm okay. and yes, and. Uh, Mr. And Mr. Chair, I already have a draft for uh, Section 18 and a new Section 19 for subsidiary liability. Dinilinyate ko na yung solidary at yung hindi. Uh, you can at least have something to begin with in the TWG. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, Senator Sherwin, uh, if there is no objection, uh, Come second, we just call Senator Sherwin uh, being one of uh, the author of the main bill. So if there's no objection, okay, so so it the, the bills, the two bills, the Gatchalian and the Marcos bills are referred to a technical working group. The committee secretary will invite uh, government agencies, private sector stakeholders to participate in the technical working group. Okay, just announce the schedule po. So, okay, so are we all done? No other matters? Okay, so our hearing is hereby terminated and thank you to all of you. Thank you, my fellow, my fellow senators and all of the resource persons. Maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat for your participation.
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 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 Bye, Comsec Jingle. Uh, I, 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 I